Welcome back to the world according to Briggs and a video about the best rural towns in America. Three years ago, we started this series about the best rural towns in each state. It started off with one that was just throughout the country. Everyone liked it, so we started breaking it down by state. I think we finished most of them. Today, we're going to show you 15 of those videos in that series, all put together in like a giant compilation, playlist, remix, whatever you want to call it. In this video, we're going from Florida to California to New Hampshire to Washington and everything in between. Let's start off with the Sunshine State, Florida. What is going on, everyone? Are you sick of the big city? Want to find a nice rural town, get a mortgage, and live the American dream, or just retire away from the big city? Who doesn't, right? Today, we're looking at great rural towns in Florida. Florida is an interesting state. It has some great cities, fun things to do, and a bunch of crime-infested backwood towns that should be avoided by anyone not in the alligator trades. Those lame small rural towns created a big problem creating this list. Great small towns were hard to find, in Florida. Now, to be totally transparent, Florida isn't a total mess. When you compare their big cities to other states with similar size cities, they aren't that bad. Miami does have some crime, just like all cities, but it has amazing food, amazing beaches, and a bunch of entertainment. Tampa is a solid coastal city, along with Fort Myers and St. Pete, and then you have Orlando, which has far too much stuff to do. Like I said in the other videos, I normally do top 10 lists, but not all states have 10 good rural towns, and I don't want to waste your time with some towns that are pretty much a reach just to get to 10. Besides the crime in their small towns, a lot of their small towns are really attached to a metro area, so that kind of knocks them off this list. The focus of this series is rural towns. That normally implies it's a good distance outside a metro area. With the towns in these videos, we're looking for that sweet spot, a decent place to live that isn't too close to any major cities, it's easy on the crime rate, and it's not five hours away from any kind of health care. And they also can't have horrible internet. Those are the requirements for these videos, and those are the things that also knocked a lot of small towns off this list. In Florida, we found five for this, which I believe is the lowest we've gotten so far. All right, let's take a look. Number five, Bluntstown, Florida. Bluntstown sits about an hour west of Tallahassee in the Florida Panhandle. This is a quiet rural Florida town that sits near the Apalachicola River. This is a great town if you like to fish, by the way. The river is right there, and I've watched some videos where people pulled huge catfish out of the water there. Bluntstown was originally named for a Creek Indian chief who had been given the land by Andrew Jackson for aiding Jackson in his battle against other Native Americans. Today, the city's primarily known as the home of the Calhoun Correctional Institute, which sits just south of town. This place, uh, you know, Florida's always going to be getting hurricanes and different parts of the state get hit all the time. So it's not like you got to worry every single year that your house is going to get blown over, but it does happen. On October 10th, 2018, Bluntstown was hit by a Category 5 hurricane. It was Hurricane Michael. It struck town and just about destroyed this place. If a hurricane does hit, good news. They got some medical care in town. They have Calhoun Liberty Hospital and a few other clinic type places. Calhoun Liberty hospital, has an emergency room 24 hours a day, all that. It's not the biggest thing because this is a small town, but it looks like it could do the job for just about anything. Anything past what they can offer you, you got to go into Tallahassee about an hour away. So when it comes to healthcare, Bluntstown gets a thumbs up. Bluntstown only has a population of about 2,500 residents, and they got a crime rate that is 25% lower than the national average. So they get a thumbs up when it comes to their crime rate because Florida, in general, has a pretty high crime rate in most small towns, like I said at the beginning of this video. When it comes to real estate, they get another thumbs up there too. They have a few homes right now that are going for 150000 to 200000 and they look decent. You might have to do a little bit of work, but they are livable, and there's something to have. In the last few months, January, February, March, they had sold other homes around 300 to 400,000 that were really nice. So they get a thumbs up for real estate. Now where they drop the ball is their internet. They don't have the best options. They have HughesNet and Viastat, Viastat, whatever. That's satellite internet, which I don't advise to anyone, but they have one called Consolidated, which is DSL. That covers 100% of the town, and that only offers 50 Mbps. That's not the best. Like I've been saying, gig is normal 
normally the standard. In rural areas, 100 Mbps is pretty much the standard. So they get a faded thumbs up for internet. They have it, it's not only satellite, but it's not the best. One interesting thing I did learn about Bluntstown, this is where Corn Griffin was born. Corn Griffin was a boxer who fought James Braddock. If you ever see the movie Cinderella Man, he was one of the boxers that James Braddock beat on his uh, late in the career march to the championship. Number four, Frostproof, Florida. Frostproof is a small town with a very interesting name in central Florida, sandwiched between two lakes. They got Lake Clinch to the west and Reedy Lake to the east. Again, if fishing's your thing, this could be your town. If you want to find it on the map, it's about an hour and a half east of Tampa. The settlement in this area was established in 1850, and it was originally a fort. This is how most of Central Florida towns got their start. This one in particular was called Fort Clinch. The settlement and Fort Clinch were abandoned after only a few months of people being there. Then in the 1880s, Frostproof began seeing its first permanent settlers as homesteaders that were attracted here because of all the fishing and hunting. The name Frostproof was a marketing ploy to convince potential landowners that the town has never had and never would have any frost that could destroy their citrus crops. They spoke too soon. Only a couple years after naming it Frostproof, they had the Great Freeze of 1895 that killed most of the citrus in the area. I guarantee the clown that decided to call it Frostproof or the one that suggested it in the first place was run out of town. They got a little over 3,000 residents living there right now and they have a crime rate that's 37% lower than the national average. They get a thumbs up for that. When it comes to healthcare, they got a couple family clinics and, you know, family practices. They also have the Central Florida Healthcare. Frostproof is here in town. Anything major, you're going to have to head up to Lake Wales about 20 minutes north where they've got legit hospitals up there. So they get a thumbs up for that because 20 minutes is not that far away. Realistically, if you know anyone from Florida that lives in the backwoods, that's really a seven minute drive. The way those people drive there is alarming sometimes. When it comes to internet, no problems there. They got Xfinity offering one gig to about 98% of the town. They also have Frontier that covers about 75% of the town offering 150 Mbps. So they get a thumbs up for internet. It's good to see a rural town have gig internet. When it comes to real estate, pretty reasonable here. If you want to get something livable that probably needs a little work, you're looking around $220,000. When you get up to about $250,000, it's going to be okay. Realistically, if you want something nice, you're looking at about $320,000 on up. Right now, they have some lakefront property going for $650,000. Give you an idea, if this was lakefront property anywhere in California, it would probably be a million and a half. They got a lot to choose from right now, including some newer homes that are going up. So plenty of stuff on the market in different ranges. So they get a big thumbs up for real estate. Number three, High Springs, Florida. High Springs is a small town about 30 minutes northwest of Gainesville. High Springs was a town that popped up in the early 1880s when the train came this way. They also had mining in the area, so the town was settled pretty fast. This town has had a few different names. First, it was Santa Fe, spelled S-A-N-T-A-F-F-Y. Not even kidding. Once someone came to town that could spell and knew their way around a dictionary, they pointed out that they needed to change the name to the proper spelling before everyone in town grew a mole. It. So they did. They changed it to the proper spelling of Santa Fe. Unable to escape the jokes from the earlier spelling, I guess, they changed the name again to Orion. A couple years after that, someone said, why don't we change the name? Orion's too hard to spell, and we're really not even sure if we're spelling it properly since the dude with the dictionary left. So they decided to go with Springs. Not sure where the high came from, but now it's High Springs. High Springs is a great place to live. They only have a population of 2,500 residents that enjoy a crime rate that's 45% lower than the national average. Average. They get a big thumbs up for crime rate. When it comes to internet, they get another big thumbs up. They get Cox offering one gig to 99% of the town. They also got Kinetic giving DSL at a gig, they say, and that covers 99% of the town as well. When it comes to healthcare, they have a few family practices and a couple doctors in town, so that's kind of nice. It's not a terribly big place, but you're going to have to go to Gainesville if you need anything major like emergency room type stuff. So they get a thumbs up for that too, because they're not too far away. To real estate, you got a lot of options here. There's about eight places available right now, starting off at about $185,000, which is a three bedroom, one bath. Doesn't look bad. Looks livable. All the way up to one that's about $500,000 on the outskirts of town. And everything in between. Two twenty-five dollars looks decent. Two forty-five. dollars So they get a thumbs up for real estate because they got a lot to choose from. 
Number two, Bristol, Florida. Back up to the panhandle we go right across the river from Bluntstown, we have the town of Bristol. Bristol is a small town of about 1,100 residents, and it also sits on the Apalachicola River. Bristol is another one of those water tower towns that I seem to like for some reason. They also have, what's really cool, one of their parks, they have one of those little railroads that you take the kids on, you could ride, goes around the park. I like little unique things for communities like that. That's always something that's special for anyone that grew up in a town like that. I love that. This town's about 50 minutes west of Tallahassee or 25 minutes if you learned to drive from a Floridian dad. According to a lawyer back in the 1950s or so, this area was the site of the biblical Garden of Eden. Yeah, he also thought that he found some wood left over from Noah's Ark. Yeah, just rowing around in the backwoods of Florida, come across some wood from the Ark. Happens all the time. The crime rate in Bristol is outstanding. It's 56% lower than the national average, so they get a big thumbs up for that. Where they kind of suck is their internet. They have consolidated, which gives them 50 Mbps for 99% of the town. 50 Mbps, that you can get your work done. It's just not great, so they get a faded thumbs up for that. When it comes to healthcare, they also kind of get a faded thumbs up because they do have a clinic and a doctor in town. Also, you have over there in Bluntstown right across the way, and they got the Calhoun County Hospital, which is good size and should be able to take care of anything you need, anything they can't. You got Tallahassee 50 minutes to the east. They also get a thumbs up for real estate. I mean, they have four things for sale right now that are decent. You're starting money. You're going to want to look at something at least 200000 That's where it starts, and it goes all the way up to 400000 They had some outstanding places sell earlier this year for like two hundred fifty to 300000 and they were great. Nice places, ready to move in. So like I said, big thumbs up for that also. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. Head on over, watch some videos, subscribe, give some videos big thumbs up. There's a link down below. All right, on to number one. And number one, Disney World. Just kidding. Keystone Heights, Florida. Keystone Heights is a small rural town of about 1,500 residents, about 30 minutes east of Gainesville on Lake Geneva. Not the Swiss French Lake Geneva, the Florida one. Yeah, Wisconsin has one too. This is another town if you like everything to do with water. Fishing, boating, whatever you want to do, you could do it around here. You could also live on the cheap. Cost of living here is 12% lower than the national average, which is outstanding. Their crime rate is even better. It's 62% lower than the national average, they get a giant thumbs up for that one. You know what else they get a giant thumbs up for? Internet. They got Xfinity there that covers 99.9% .9 of the town, and they get one gig there. They have a couple other options there, but none of them go above 50 Mbps. When it comes to healthcare, Keystone Heights is outstanding. They've got a couple family practices. They also have an urgent care, a dentist. They're good to go. Anything else you need past all that, you got Gainesville right down the road, and they can cover everything. So they get a thumbs up for healthcare too. When it comes to real estate, they do a pretty good job of having everything from 129,000 for a house you probably don't want, but might take anyway, all the way up to like 700,000. But I'd say if you want on something decent in Keystone Heights, you're probably looking at about 300,000. Somewhere in that area will get you someplace nice and it might even be on their golf course. Yeah, this place has homes for about 300, 320,000 on a golf course. So they get a big thumbs up for that one. Originally, Keystone Heights was called Brooklyn because they have a little lake there called Lake Brooklyn, so they just called it Brooklyn. This is a great place to live, especially if you want to have that small town vibe for a while because since 1990, they've only gained 100 residents. I think it's going to continue to stay under 2,000 for quite some time. All right, moving across the country to the Golden State, we find California. No matter what they say on the news or what you hear on YouTube, California does have some decent places to live, and a lot of people really love this state. The question is, can you afford to live in these small towns? Let's take a look. Today, we're looking at great rural towns in California. Yes, they have some, so close your mouth. This is the fifth video in this series. We did the entire United States. We did New Hampshire, Montana, and Tennessee was our last one. Today, we're looking at the Golden State. A couple things about rural California towns. They rarely have jobs like most rural towns, so you have to bring one or not need one, like retired or whatever. And you'll want to look into getting solar panels for whatever house you buy in California. California gets a lot of sun and all the utilities in the Golden State.
state are extremely high, natural gas, water, and especially electricity. With the towns in these videos, we are looking for that sweet spot, a decent place to live that isn't too close to a major city, it's easy on the crime rate, not five hours away from a hospital, and not so far out in the sticks where you can't get decent internet. Those things knock a lot of really nice small towns off these lists. When you don't have internet, you can't work from home, and if there's not a hospital, doctor's office, or clinic or something nearby, and you're getting up there in age, not a great place for you to live. In the last video, I explained that not all states have 10 good rural towns, and I don't want to waste your time with some places that are a reach and shouldn't really be on the list. Got it? Get it? Good. Let's take a look at seven great rural towns in California. Number 7. Ferndale, California we start off in Northern California in Ferndale. This is a part of the state that's called the Lost Coast of California. It's about a 30 minute drive south from Eureka, California. The history of this town is in the dairy industry. Ferndale is surrounded by a bunch of farmland near the mouth of the Eel River with forested foothills to its south. This is a beautiful part of the state and it's a beautiful small town. It's got old Victorian homes all over the place. The downtown looks like a freaking movie set. Housing here is up there. Houses here are expensive just like all of California. But in my opinion, it's a little less than I expected for such a beautiful town so close to the ocean. There's currently nothing for sale in like downtown Ferndale, but on the outskirts, you have a couple places. One's going for like 600,000, then there's another one for about 500,000 with a vacant lot for sale right now for 400,000. Late last year and in February of this year, they sold a few homes for around 700,000. And that's normally what you could expect, I would say right about now, to get something decent, livable, that's nice. You'll be lucky if you find something that's a little bit run down for under 400,000 thousand in or around Ferndale. But it's California, so it's to be expected. We keep getting comments whenever I say something is expensive like this and people, nobody could afford that. And like I said in the last video, yes, people can afford that. If people couldn't afford those prices, they wouldn't be those prices. Some people can. So Ferndale gets a faded thumbs up when it comes to real estate because they don't have a lot of options. And when they do have options, it's pretty expensive. Like right now they have a home that's got 1,700 acres and you could see the ocean from the property and it's going for just under $6 million. When it comes to the crime rate, it's outstanding in Ferndale. It's 31% lower than the national average, so they get a big thumbs up for that one. And their internet is pretty decent, and I'm surprised for being such a small town out in the middle of nowhere. They get 99% of the town is covered by Sudden Link, which they say you can get up to 940 megabits per second, so that's solid. When it comes to healthcare, you got a few options. Ferndale has a small community health center here, which isn't terribly big, but about 20 minutes to the east of Ferndale, you have Fortuna, right across the Eel River, and they have a couple places. They have the Providence Redwood Memorial Hospital, and they also have the Fortuna Family Medical Group. So you've got some options. And then if you need anything past that, you can always head up to Eureka. So they get a thumbs up when it comes to healthcare. Number six, Weaverville, California. Weaverville came to my attention from an email. I'm getting ready to do a series on small towns that need some new blood, that need some attention, you know, do our part to help save a small town. A lot of small towns are suffering, and I got an email from a nice woman from Weaverville. Weaverville is one of those small towns that have everything. It has the healthcare we need, the internet, low crime, fresh air, good people. I will be visiting there this summer, and I'll give you a more detailed explanation on what's going on in Weaverville. But Weaverville is about an hour west of Redding, California, and they have just under four. 4,000 residents that enjoy a crime rate that's 30% lower than the national average. So they get a thumbs up for that. When it comes to their internet, they have a few options. You have Velocity Cable Internet that gives about 150 megabytes per second to almost 90% of the town. It also says that they have DSL from Frontier that covers about 97% of the town with 50 Mbps. So I don't know, Frontier, I thought they were going out of business, but apparently they're still here. They were here near my home in Oregon, but now it's called Zipley or something like that. Thought they got bought out, but I guess not. Regardless, always check before you move to any small town and don't go off just what I'm saying about the internet because you can get a house someplace that doesn't, you know, get internet from any of these companies. So make sure you check first. Like I said, the crime rate here is solid. It's 30% lower than the national average, so they get a thumbs up for that one. Their internet gets a thumbs up. When it comes to healthcare, they have the Trinity Hospital, which, in my opinion, is pretty good size for a town this small. They also have a couple different doctor's offices. They also have a dentist in town and an orthodontist. Anything past that, you just gotta head out to Reading, not too far away, and Reading's a good-sized city and should have everything you need. So they get a big thumbs up for their healthcare. 
The downtown is filled with cute little shops and like Ferndale, it looks like a movie set downtown. They got a brewing company called Trinity County Brewing, Mama Llama's Eatery and Cafe, New York Saloon, that sounds fun, and the Red Dragon Chinese place. So they got everything you need here. Unlike Ferndale, it is affordable to buy places here. They have a bunch of places that look decent, livable, and ready to move in, in between $250,000 and $350,000, which isn't terrible. Now they do have some places that are a little outside of town with a little bit of property that go for upwards of like $800,000 on up. You can also grab lots of land that go for as low as $30,000 up to I think one was like $140,000 just for a plot of land. So they get a big thumbs up for real estate because you got a lot of options here. This is a nice town. You got a lake which is drying up right now because all lakes in California are drying up. But you have Trinity Lake right down the road, which is nice. Weaverville has a little less than 4,000 residents. Number five, Cambria, California. Cambria is a seaside town in California between Monterey and Santa Barbara along Highway 1. This is one of the greatest road trips you can ever take up Highway 1. The ocean's right there on the left 90% of the time. Cambria is one of the small towns you go through. Cambria is an extremely expensive city to live in. It's beautiful and it's situated right amongst all these Monterey Pines. It's one of the cutest little towns you'll come across taking that route. Cambria sits about 40 minutes west of Paso Robles, which is probably the closest big city there. Morro Bay isn't that big. San Luis Obispo is kind of close too, but Paso Robles is a little bit bigger. When it comes to healthcare, it's a little weird. They got like five separate doctor's offices, and judging by the price of the property here, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of other doctors just wandering around the town. They have a small clinic called the Cambria Community Health District, and that's got a couple doctors there and ambulances and all that. Anything past what they can give you, you're going to have to go into Paso Robles, which, like I said, is only 40 minutes away. So for healthcare, they get a thumbs up. When it comes to Internet, you got no worries there. Spectrum covers about 98% of the town and you can get one gig. So they get a big thumbs up for their internet. Now, when it comes to real estate, this place is a little bit weird. I mean, it's expensive, but it's a little bit weird. On the south side of town, you have normal sized homes where it's a normal community. The houses are almost the same size as the lot. Typical suburban American homes. And if you find one for under $700,000, it's a freaking unicorn. These are normal homes that in most any state, let's say Missouri, would probably go for about $225,000. Oregon, they probably go for about $500,000. In California, they go for over seven, dollars $750,000. No pool, no wine cellar, just a normal home. Then dotted around the rest of the town, you have million dollar homes, but they don't just stop at one million. Some of them are two and almost three million dollars. So they get a faded thumbs up for that because it's just too expensive for the average Joe, but they are beautiful homes, so I'll give them that. Cambria has a population of just under 6,000 residents and they enjoy a crime rate that is 40% lower than the national average. So they get a thumbs up for that one. All in all, if you can afford it, Cambria is beautiful and it might be worth it if, like I said, you can afford it. Number four, Mariposa, California. Back to the inland part of California, we go near Yosemite and more reasonable real estate. The town of Mariposa was first settled in 1849 and they had this chain of gold rush towns is what they called them. This was the southernmost of those gold rush towns. A year after it was founded, they actually laid down the streets and the man that did it was John C. Fremont. He's a big deal in California. Technically, Mariposa isn't a town. It's a census designated area in Mariposa County, but most people just call it Mariposa. This is not a bad place to live. Good clean air, beautiful scenery, and plenty of things to do. And like I said, reasonable real estate. Just poking around Zillow, you can get decent homes here for around 300000 Anything below that, you're going to need to probably do a little extra work. But right around four hundred to 450000 you're going to get something nice. And it's probably going to come with a couple acres. And just like any place in California, you have homes that are over 700000 and get up way over a million. If you need to go into a bigger city for healthcare or whatever, you got Modesto or you got Fresno. That's like not the best choices. It's almost like choosing between heat stroke and hypothermia. Mariposa sits about 45 minutes east of Merced, California, which Merced is right between Fresno and Modesto. And that would be where you'd have to go if you had some kind of medical thing you needed taken care of that they couldn't cover in Mariposa. Now, Mariposa does have a pretty decent medical facility called the John C. Fremont Health District. But, you know, they're not terribly big, so you'd probably go to Merced and get anything taken care of that they can't handle there. So they get a thumbs up for health care. 
As far as real estate goes, Mariposa gets a thumbs up. Mariposa has a little over 2,000 residents and they have a crime rate that is 41% lower than the national average. That's outstanding, especially for this part of California. I mean, it's far enough away from Fresno and Modesto, but still, it's kind of in that area. When it comes to internet in Mariposa, you have Sierra Tel, which I guess stands for telephone, but they cover about 99% of Mariposa. They have DSL and fiber, where you can get up to 800 megabytes per second. So they get a thumbs up there too. Not bad. Number three, Quincy, California. Quincy, California is a nice little mountain town that uh, they got kind of close to getting burned down a couple of years ago with one of the forest fires they had up there. The town of Quincy is actually considered another census designated area, but people really don't refer to it as that. They call it the town of Quincy. But Quincy is in Palumas County, sitting about an hour and a half west of Reno, Nevada. That's probably where you'd have to go if you wanted any form of entertainment past, I don't know, fending off wildfires from your house. Quincy has a good sized hospital on the west side of town. It's called the Plumas District Hospital, which it's a pretty good sized place for such a small town. Now, I understand that normally when you have a hospital this size in a small town, it's dealing with the county, and that's what's going on here. My friend Stacy from high school, she lives in Quincy. I think she's a school teacher there. One of the sweetest girls I know. Women, lady now, I guess, now that we're closing in on 50 here. But I guess when you've known someone since they were like 14, they're kind of still a girl in your head. I don't know. Anyway, Quincy gets a thumbs up when it comes to health care. As far as real estate, it's kind of a mixed bag here. It ranges. It goes anywhere from 200000 all the way up to 600000 I would say anything over 300000 is going to be pretty decent. If you want to build your own cabin, they have plenty of lots going for anywhere from 12000 up to like 175000 So they get a thumbs up because they are fairly reasonable for California and they have a lot to choose from. When it comes to internet, they have DSL from AT&T that covers about 96% of the town with 25 megabytes. But luckily, they have another one called Plumas Sierra Telecommunications, which has cable and fiber where you can get a gig. The downside is they only cover about 70% of the town. So they get a thumbs up still. Quincy has almost 2,000 residents and they enjoy a crime rate that is 49% lower than the national average. So they get a big thumbs up for that one. Number two, Kernville, California. Kernville's a nice little town in, I guess it's still Southern California, but I like to call it Central California. It sits in the Sequoia National Forest, sort of, and it is about an hour east of Bakersfield. This is a great little town. My wife's uh, father has property there. We used to go up there in the summers all the time and go rafting down the Kern River. Lake Isabella's right there, so there's a lot of things to do here. As far as healthcare goes, you got the Kern Valley Hospital on the other side of Lake Isabella, about 20 minutes away from Kernville. It's a pretty good sized place and you should get most things taken care of there. If you can't and you need something more, you got to go into Bakersfield about an hour away. So they get a big thumbs up for healthcare because they're not doing bad. When it comes to internet, you got Mediacom out there and 95% of the homes can get Mediacom and they have one gig internet there. After that, you got like Kern Valley Wireless gives you fixed wireless for 50 megs and they cover like 96% of the town. Now, like I've said in other videos, you always got HughesNet and Viasat, but those aren't the best. You know, you get cloudy days and you don't get internet. Weird stuff like that with satellite. I've had to deal with Hughes internet for a couple days at a time on vacations and stuff. Every single time it was a freaking nightmare. So they get a big thumbs up for internet because Minicom's pretty good. And when it comes to real estate, this is California, so things are going to be a little expensive. You can get trailers there. They have like trailer parks for under 100,000, probably under 60,000 in most cases, but they also have homes for around 300,000. 300,000 is your starting point. In between three and 400,000, you should be able to find something decent to live. And of course, they've got really, really nice ones that start off around 700,000 and work their way up. If you want, you can go extra cheap and uh, live in a van down by the river. So real estate, they get a thumbs up too, because they've got a lot of options for you there and they're fairly reasonable for California. The town of Kernville has less than a thousand people, but during the summer, when people start coming up there for the lake and the river, it swells to about 3,000 people or thereabouts. But they're still able to maintain a crime rate that's 55% lower than the national average. Outstanding, Kernville. They get a big thumbs up for that one. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There's a link down below. We'd love it if you went over and subscribed. All right, on to number one. And number one, Truckee, California. 
Truckee, California is one of the most beautiful small towns I've ever been through or visited. I visited when I was a little bit young, probably 16, 17, and I've been through there a couple other times, had lunch or whatever, and it's just a beautiful, nice little place to hang out and be. It's expensive, and it's in the Sierra Nevada, so you know it's going to be beautiful, but it's expensive. Truckee is about 30 minutes southwest of Reno, Nevada, and it's not too far from Donner Lake and Lake Tahoe. It has the Truckee River going right through town, and it's really close to the Donner Party Memorial Site. If you don't know about the Donner Party, they're a bunch of pioneers that got stuck in the Sierra Nevadas in the winter and may or may not have resorted to cannibalism at one point. I saw some movie about it or some TV show when I was a kid, probably about 11 or 12, and anytime we ever ever went camping or anything up there. I was just totally afraid, you know, the worst was going to happen up there. When it comes to real estate, Truckee, you know, it's beautiful. It's in the Sierra Nevadas. It's near skiing and everything you want to do. It's expensive. Like I had said, you could find homes anywhere from 600,000 on up to 3.5 million. Okay. So they're all over the map here. They do have some like, uh, condos and townhomes that'll go for about 250,000 but that's about as low as you'll ever see they get a faded thumbs up not because it's bad it's just so expensive the average person can't really afford to ever buy a house here Truckee has several options when it comes to internet. One of them's got to fit what you need. You got the Plumas Sierra Telecommunications, which has one gig, and they say they supply it to 99% of the homes in Truckee. You also have Sudden Link, which covers about 99% of the town. They give you almost a gig. You have another place called Oasis Broadband. They have 100 Mbps, and about 75% of Truckee can get that. So they get a big thumbs up for their internet. They got all kinds of options. Truckee also has a solid hospital. It's Tahoe Forest Hospital, and they got all kinds of mountain medical centers and outpatient things. They've got everything you need here in Truckee, so you're good to go. And I imagine if there is anything else you need, Reno is right there 30 minutes away, so they get a big thumbs up for healthcare. One thing I will mention, they have a you know, 24 hour emergency room here, which a lot of these places that I've mentioned, these small towns don't have. Truckee has around 16,000 uh, residents, which is a little high for this list. They're almost at that 20,000 mark where they fall out of the small town area, but they're really spread out, so it really does feel like a small town. Those residents enjoy a crime rate that is 70% below the national average. Bravo, Truckee. You get a big thumbs up for that one. All right, now we head on out to my third favorite state, Colorado. Let's take a look. Today we're looking at the great state of Colorado. A couple things about rural Colorado towns. They can get extremely expensive. Some of the towns are amazing, like Telluride, Aspen, Vale, to name a few, but they're really only for the rich and famous. Emphasis on rich. I could do an entire video on those type of places, but then the video would just be about mountain towns 99% of us can't afford to live in. What we're looking for in this video is that sweet spot, a decent place to live that isn't too close to a major city, it's easy on the crime rate, not five hours away from a hospital, and not so far out in the sticks where you can't get decent internet. This video is kind of targeting people that are retiring or people that work from home. That's the way this country is going. A lot of those types are moving to small town America. They want to find a rural place and just call it good. Some of the things like internet and crime and being too far away knocked a lot of really good towns off this list. In the last few videos, I explained that most of the videos on this channel, we do 10. We do top 10 lists, but not all of these states have 10 decent towns that could fit on this list. So in Colorado, we got seven. Let's take a look. Number seven, Peonia, Colorado. Peonia is a small town that sits on the north fork of the Gunderson River. I've seen this river a couple times, and it's a creek. It's only about shin deep. I'm sure it gets a little bigger during different times of the year, but it wasn't that big when I went there, and both times I went was in the summer. So, yeah, you have that. Peonia is about five hours west of Colorado Springs and about an hour north of Montrose, Colorado. This is a nice rural mountain town. It's just fresh air, great scenery, nice people. It's got a population of about 1,400 residents that enjoy a crime rate that's 34% lower than the national average. That is outstanding. So Peonia gets a thumbs up for their crime rate. And good news, after a two-year pandemic hiatus, the Palisade International Honeybee Festival is regaining momentum. 
This is a festival they have downtown with like, you know, 50, 60, 70 vendors every single year other than the pandemic. It's that type of place that has a nice little festival. I love small towns in Colorado. A lot of times they look like regular towns that you'd find any place else like in California or Utah or whatever. But then you look around, you go, oh yeah, it's surrounded by mountains and it's beautiful. When you're not downtown enjoying the Honey Bee Festival, you can go home and use Spectrum Internet. They get 100 megs here. And they cover about 85% of the town. CenturyLink's also there that covers some more. Now, they get a thumbs up for that. When it comes to their health care, they don't have anything in town. But 15 minutes away in Hotchkiss, they have a clinic. And then if you want to go 30 minutes away in Delta, they have a full-blown hospital, which is called Delta County Memorial Hospital. Because they don't have anything in Paonia, and that one's just an annex down there in Hotchkiss, they get a faded thumbs up for health care. I was watching one YouTube channel called uh, Ghost Girl Diaries, and apparently she thinks Paonia is haunted. Number six, Georgetown, Colorado. Georgetown. Almost every Georgetown I've been to is a nice place to live, and this Georgetown in Colorado is no exception. This Georgetown is tucked in a nice little valley with the Clear Creek running right through town. It has a nice little area called Sixth Street, which is sort of serves as their, you know, downtown cool area where everyone gets coffee and tourists show up. Most of the time that street's called Main Street or something. Not in this town. It's Sixth Street. The Main Street in Georgetown, it's like a dirt road that goes by houses. Georgetown sits about an hour west of downtown Denver. And it's a little out there from any kind of real medical care. The closest place is probably Red Rocks Medical Center. And that's a hospital. And they are about 40 minutes away. So if you got any pressing medical needs, this might not be the best place for you. But if you got bad lungs and you need some fresh air, it's a great place for you. Georgetown gets a faded thumbs up for health care. When it comes to the crime rate, it's not the best, but it's still lower than the national average. It's 4% lower. So they get a faded thumbs up when it comes to crime rate. When you take a look at their internet, they're doing pretty good. 84% of the town is covered by Xfinity, which can get you a gig. There's another 80% of the town is covered by CenturyLink, which will give you 140 megabytes per second. So they get a big thumbs up when it comes to internet. When you look at the housing in Georgetown, if you haven't picked up by now, it's expensive in Colorado. There's none of that $150,000 for a decent place in Colorado. Colorado's popular, Colorado's nice, so you gotta pay for it. Currently, the only thing they have for sale in Georgetown is a three-bedroom condo, and it's going for $419,000. I looked back to see what sold within the last few months, Back in February, they were selling a couple different homes for about four hundred fifty to five hundred fifty thousand dollars. Between September and November of 2021, they sold some really nice looking homes, two, three bedrooms. Those were going for about three hundred and sixty to four hundred and twenty thousand dollars. But in my opinion, just going off of what I saw on Zillow, you could probably get a decent house here for between four hundred fifty and five hundred thousand dollars. So real estate in Georgetown gets a thumbs up because they don't have a bunch of homes that are a million dollars plus, like a lot of towns in Colorado. Number five, Florence, Colorado. Back to the front range, we go to Florence. Florence is a small town of around 4,000 residents, and it's called a statutory town. I didn't know what that meant. My first thought was that it's a town that's not old enough to date a 20-year-old, but I was wrong. It has nothing to do with that. It is a type of town. It's got some weird little laws with it, but on the East Coast, they call them villages, like in New York and Delaware. Florence sits on the Arkansas River, about 40 minutes west of Pueblo. This isn't a mountain town. It's kind of at the base of the mountains, like the foothill area, and it's about 30 minutes east of the Royal Gorge Bridge. If you've never seen that, it's an extremely high bridge that's extremely uncomfortable to walk across. The crime rate here is outstanding. They are 60% lower than the national average, which is phenomenal. So they get a big thumbs up for that. When it comes to internet, you got no worries there. Xfinity covers about 70% of the town and they can get one gig. You can't get Xfinity, you might be able to get CenturyLink, which has 50 megabytes per second and they cover about 90% of the town. So big thumbs up for that. And the news gets better for Florence. Their housing costs aren't terrible and the homes aren't horrible. You could actually find here, matter of fact, they have some for sale right now that are going for 225000 and 250000 and they look like they're livable homes. A majority of the homes here sell for three fifty dollars to four fifty, dollars but they look decent. I'd live here. 
Now, the south side of town, like up in the hills, it looks like dirt roads and it doesn't look the best, but the main part of Florence looks pretty good. So they get a thumbs up when it comes to their real estate. Healthcare is a different story. They have a small clinic in town, which should be able to cover some things for you. If you need anything past what they can offer, Colorado Springs and Pueblo aren't terribly far away, so they get a thumbs up for healthcare too. Florence is a nice rural town. I like it. Number four, Julesburg, Colorado. Julesburg is a small farming town in the northeast corner of Colorado near the Nebraska border. This area breaks one of the main rules of moving to Colorado. You can actually live here on a budget. The cost of living here is 20% lower than the national average, and the 1,300 residents kind of enjoy that. They also enjoy a crime rate that's 29% lower than the national average, so they get a thumbs up for that one. Julesburg has the South Platte River flowing just south of town. Not a lot to do there. They do have a reservoir where you camping and fishing down the road a bit, but there isn't a lot to do here. This is a nice, quiet farming town. If you're looking to just live a quiet life and get by, this is a good place to do it. Now, their internet's kind of so-so. They got CenturyLink and a company called PC Telecom. CenturyLink will get you 100 megabytes per second. They cover about 85% of the town. PC Telecom covers about 87% of the town, and they'll get you 200 Mbps. So they get a thumbs up for that. Now, when it comes to healthcare, that's a different story. This probably isn't the best place for you if you have some nagging health concerns that you're worried about. In town, they have a place called the Sedgwick County Health Center, which has some options for you, not a lot. Anything past that, you're going to have to go down to Sterling an hour away where you'll find the Sterling Regional Medical Center. That has a lot more for you. If you need a giant hospital, you're going to Denver. So they get a faded thumbs up. Not that they're doing bad work in town, it's just not very big and I'm sure if you need a lot of different things, it, you're not going to find it there. Now here's where they shine. Housing in Julesburg is pretty cheap and the houses they have for sale right now are decent. They have one that looks nice. It looks like it's small and it looks like it's older, but it looks like it's been maintained and could probably use a coat of paint and maybe some new carpet. It's going for $75,000. It's two bedroom, one bath. It's not that big, but it's doable. They also have an older one, 160,000, one that's 70,000, one that's 99,000. It's not terrible. They got a really nice one for 299,000. That's not bad, but yeah, they have a lot of homes here under 300,000. If you want some acreage, you can go outside of town a little bit and get one for about 450,000. So they get a big thumbs up when it comes to their real estate. This one's great for you if you want to save some money. Maybe you don't have a bunch of money in retirement or whatever, and you don't care that there's not a lot of entertainment here. Number three, Rangeley, Colorado. Rangeley is a small town near the Utah border, about 20 minutes from Dinosaur, Colorado, on the northwest side of the state. Rangeley has the White River running along the north side of town, and it's a great place to retire or raise a family. This is a really nice town, and like the last one on this list, Julesburg, it's affordable when it comes to housing. I guess you gotta get towards the edge of the map before real estate becomes reasonably priced. Rangeley is a bit out there. It's kind of far away from everything. The closest big city is Grand Junction, and Grand Junction's not a terribly large city, and it's about an hour and 45 minutes away. It's to the south. Rangeley has a little over 2,000 residents, and they have a crime rate that's 98% lower than the national average. I think Disneyland has a higher crime rate. So they get a big thumbs up when it comes to crime. When it comes to internet, they're doing pretty good. They have CenturyLink covers about 90% of the town, and you can get 100 megabytes per second with them, but Spectrum is also there giving you one gig, and they cover about 84% of the town, so they get another big thumbs up right there. They also have a little hospital in town. It's pretty good size. I shouldn't say little. It's good size, especially for a town of only a little over 2,000, like I said. It is called the Rangeley District Hospital. Anything you need past that, you're going to be going down to Grand Junction or Salt Lake City if you really need to. So they get a thumbs up when it comes to their health care. Now, let's take a look at the property here because this is not bad. You can get homes here that are decent. They're, you know, older homes, probably built in the early 70s, and you can get them for under $175,000. They have a few right now for $155,000, $115,000, which looks like it needs some work. You got another one for $134,000, one for $169,000. You can get a good place here. There's a really nice one right now. It's kind of small, but $129,000. That is not bad prices for Colorado. Sure, they got some around there with a lot of property that go for over $500,000, but you can still get something decent for under, I'd say, $250,000. You're going to 
to be doing pretty good. So they get a big thumbs up when it comes to real estate. But like I said, it's a nice place. They got the White River right there in case you're into fish and things like that. They also have a little uh, local airport, the Rangeley Airport. That's on the east side of town. Overall, Rangeley is a pretty good place to live. Number two, Meeker, Colorado. About an hour east of Rangeley, you have the small town of Meeker. This is a solid choice for anyone looking for a small town. Like Rangeley, they got the White River just south of town, hiking trails, golf, and some fairgrounds. Meeker is affordable and not run down. Affordable normally comes with a crime rate that makes you buy a security system, a security door, and then worry at night that your daughter will bring home a boy with a neck tattoo that says toxic. That's not a thing here. Meeker has around 3,000 residents and a crime rate that's 69% lower than the national average. So they get a big thumbs up for that. When you go to get internet, you got two choices. CenturyLink, which has 100 megabytes per second, and they cover about 92% of the town. And then Spectrum has one gig, and they cover about 64.2% of the town. So they get a thumbs up for internet. When it comes to healthcare, not a worry in the world. Meeker has a brand new hospital called Pioneers Medical Center. This is a 10-bed hospital with an emergency room, a skilled nurses area, and a surgery center. Everything you need is going to be here. Maybe a specialist, you might have to go someplace else, but they got you covered here with just about everything from what I can tell. So they get a big thumbs up for healthcare. When it comes to real estate, they're doing great here. Older homes that are going to need some work, you could find for under 100,000. Decent ones or at least workable ones are going to be between 200 and 250,000, but the nicer ones start off about 350,000. So they got something for everyone here. Their downtown is nice and they've got a bunch of parks everywhere. Meeker's a solid choice for anyone. So they get a big thumbs up for their real estate. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There is a link down below. You know this whole thing. I've been saying it for months. Please go over, subscribe, watch some videos. All right, on to number one. And number one, Crested Butte, Colorado. Crested Butte is a really nice place to live if you want to get away and you like to ski. And in the summer, you like to mountain bike, hike, and do all that good stuff. This is an outdoor lover's dream. There's about 2,000 people that live in Crested Butte, and they enjoy a crime rate that is 47% lower than the national average. Yes, phenomenal. So they get a thumbs up for that. When it comes to healthcare, they got a couple different facilities in town, like the Crested Butte Medical Center, which has an emergency room and urgent care and all that good stuff. They got orthopedics. If you need anything beyond what they have, you got a little bit of a trip. You got Heart of the Rockies Regional Medical Center about an hour and a half away. If that doesn't work for you, you got to go all the way to Colorado Springs, and that's a trip. That's almost four hours away. So they get, you know, they got a nice place there, but you've got quite a trip if you need something serious that they can't help. So they're getting a faded thumbs up. Not saying that what they got going on, they're doing a bad job or anything like that. I'm sure they're doing an excellent job. It's just anything else, it's too far away. So if you're up there in age or something like that, you need some kind of specialist that isn't in Crested Butte, you wouldn't want to be living in Crested Butte. But you know, honestly, these days with all the video appointments that they have with doctors, it might still be doable. Who knows? When it comes to real estate, they're kind of in the middle. I mean, they're not crazy like something like Telluride or Aspen or something where your starting price for a house is $2 million. You can buy homes here for $600,000, $500,000. Even last year, they were selling some for $399,000. So you just got to look around. They don't have anything going right now for sale that isn't just a blank piece of property that you got to put a house on. So they get a thumbs up because they're not crazy expensive. They just don't have a lot of options right now. If you did decide to move here, keep one thing in mind that during the ski season, this town gets kind of big, just kind of swells during the ski season. And I'm sure it does quite a bit too uh, when summer comes around and people start mountain biking the hills and hiking and all that good stuff. When it comes to internet, they get a big thumbs up. Spectrum covers 99% of Crested Butte and they offer a gig along with uh, CenturyLink offers 80 Mbps and they cover 99% of the town. So they get a big thumbs up for internet. All right, heading up to New England. I think this is the only New England one we have on this list. New Hampshire. Let's take a look. Today we're looking at great rural towns in New Hampshire. We just did a video the other day about great rural towns to retire or live as a remote worker across the United States. We had a bunch of people ask if we could expand and do it by state. So here we are. 
I also got a bunch of questions about a good mesothelioma attorney. I guess I mentioned that and then a flurry of ads popped up on my video and then people started telling me that they went through that and got their structured settlement and then retired. Apparently this is a bigger thing than I thought it was going to be. I mean, after a while I started feeling bad. It's like, good, I'm glad you got a good lawyer. Sorry you got exposed to asbestos. If you didn't see the first video about country living, I'll explain. If you're a remote worker looking for a place away from the big city or looking to retire in the country, this video will show you some places that may fit that bill. With these towns, we're looking for that sweet spot, a decent place to live that isn't too close to a major city, but not so far away that getting to a doctor's appointment or something like being able to catch a quick flight out of town that doesn't include crop dusting. We also look at the internet speeds on this video because that's part of life these days. I mean, maybe about 5% of us can get by living in the country and not need internet at all. Most of us need internet. All right, let's take a look at some great rural towns in the Granite State, New Hampshire. Number seven, Berlin, New Hampshire. Now, this isn't in any particular order, and yes, you did hear me right, seven, not our usual 10. That's because not every state has 10 solid options in this category. I don't wanna be reaching on a bunch of them and give you a bunch of crap. I wanna get to the good ones and not waste a bunch of your time. We start off with our first rural town of Berlin. It is in the northern section of New Hampshire, about 20 minutes from the main border and about two hours from Concord, New Hampshire. In case you need a doctor's appointment, you should be able to get a doctor's appointment be perfectly fine in town because Berlin has the Andrew Scroggin Valley Hospital. They also have a small community college and they got about 10,000 residents living here. Those residents get to have clean air and a nice river going right through town, the Andrew Scroggin River. Great fishing, fly fishing, whatever you want to do. And you're also not too far from the Canadian border in case you need to get some medication. Berlin used to be like the center of the universe when it came to pulp and paper making. They had a paper mill here that pretty much employed most of the town for a lot of years. It changed hands and finally closed down. I definitely would not recommend this place to anyone that needs a job. I mean, the people that are there are having a hard time finding jobs themselves. This town is in desperate need of, well, I guess a big industry to move in or the people that I'm targeting on this video and that's retirees and remote workers. The crime rate in Berlin is 40% lower than the national average, and the housing is about 52% lower than the national average. When it comes to the housing, I don't think they've really built any new houses in quite some time here. You can get older houses that might need a little work for under 200,000. And that's really surprising because this is New England and all states are not created equal when it comes to housing prices. New England is almost always always going to be more expensive than a place like, I don't know, the Deep South or something. But Berlin's doing a pretty good job. When it comes to internet, you got Spectrum Internet, which gives you about a gig. That's good. Anyone could work with that. They also have a thing called Consolidated DSL, which says they have 100 megabytes per second. Now, every place on these lists have like HughesNet and Viastat and stuff like that. Those are satellite that you can get anywhere in the country. But if you're working from home and you need a good internet connection, that's usually not the best option. You're just checking emails and stuff like that. Yeah, probably fine. But if you need to do video conferencing or upload anything, you might be having a rough time with those. Number six, Peterborough, New Hampshire. Peterborough is a small southern New Hampshire town of about 3,000 residents, about an hour west of Manchester, New Hampshire. And it's about an hour and a half away from Boston. So you got two, well, Manchester's not the biggest city, but Boston definitely is. So you got two options if you need to get someplace. Like I said in the last video, local news is a great way to understand what a place is like. If they don't have a bunch of shootings or home invasions on the news, it might be a great place to live. The big news in Peterborough right now is Scott is living leaving the Recycle Center after 22 years of work in there. Bravo, Scott. Peterborough doesn't have a lot of houses for sale right now, but it is worth keeping an eye on if New Hampshire's something you want to do. In 2020 and 2021, they had a handful of older homes that are nice, sell for between 250 and 350,000. Obviously, prices have changed and they've gone up, but I'm not going to guess at what they are right now. The crime rate here is 61% lower than the national average. This is another place that has that consolidated internet. It's DSL and fiber in this town. It says 99% of Peterborough is covered by them. And it looks like about 70% of the town has the option of Xfinity. So you got two good options there. And of course, via satellite or via satellite and HughesNet are always there. 
Number five, Bristol, New Hampshire. Bristol is a nice river town of almost 2,000 residents on the Pemi Jawasset River, or what most locals call it, the Pemi. If you don't know, New Hampshire is a very rural state with plenty of things to do for the outdoor types. Bristol has hiking trails and good fishing in the area. They got creeks and wooded areas all over the place. You could find something to do outdoors if that's what you're into. They also have a really nice, clean downtown and next to no crime. The crime rate here is 54% lower than the national average. Now, this is another one that doesn't have a lot for sale right now. They do have one really nice one that's just off of a lake, $430,000. Yeah, it's a little pricey, but you're right there on a lake and a nice place to live. If you need to get into the hospital or anything like that, you're only 35, 40 minutes away from Concord. This is not a bad place to raise a family. And when it comes to internet, you got a couple choices, but you got Consolidated, which is DSL and 80 Mbps. And then they got one called BreezeLine, which I've never heard of, but you can get one gig from them. It's uh, cable internet. Number four, Plymouth, New Hampshire. Plymouth is a small rural town and about the center of New Hampshire. It has around 4,000 residents that enjoy a solid hospital, a nearby country club for golfers, ski slopes, a gun club, and a really safe town. This place is incredibly safe. The crime rate here is 37% lower than the national average. And the only thing that I was looking up their crime, it's just like theft and stuff, petty theft, breaking into cars. That's all that they had. And it was hardly any of that. Now I got a little sad reading this one. Like I said, I like to go to the local news and see what's happening if nothing but but obituaries of older folks, that's fine. It's expected. Sad, but expected. I looked up Plymouth and a young lady passed away, 21 years old, in an auto accident. And I feel so bad for the family. Been thinking about it all day. They must be devastated right now. You never want to see that. Anyway, kind of sucks. Plymouth is just about 20 minutes north of Concord. And it has solid internet. BreezeLine and Consolidated offer gig internet here. Now, of course, they got some other ones. But BreezeLine and Consolidated are your best options. Like I said, they got good health care. They have Spear Memorial Hospital right there and dentist and all that stuff. And they also have Plymouth State University where that young lady was a student at. If you decide you want to move to Plymouth and buy a house, you have some good options here. I mean, it's relatively inexpensive, so to speak. You can get a home anywhere from $240,000 to $300,000. It might need a little work. You get them a lot higher, and they're not going to need any work. But, you know, two hundred fifty dollars to $300,000, you should be able to get something livable. Number three, Conway, New Hampshire. A little northeast of Plymouth, we have Conway, New Hampshire, right there by the main border. This is a great place for hikers. They got a lot of trailheads in this area. Maybe not in town, but the surrounding area has a lot of hiking trails, a lot of good mountains to climb up. Conway is not a cheap place to live. It's actually pretty expensive uh, when it comes to real estate. If you want to buy anything right now, I think the cheapest thing they have is about $420,000, but they go all the way up into a million. But it's a wonderful place to live. Now, in late 2021 and just a couple days ago, they have sold some homes for around 300000 but a majority of the homes are going to be over 400000 in some cases, well over 400000 Conway has a little over 3,000 residents, and they have a crime rate that's 10% lower than the national average. Conway has the Saco River right there, which has great fly fishing, things like that. They also have a smaller river called the Swift River and a big pond right in town. They also have an ice arena and a Subaru dealership. I mean, what kind of respectable mountain town that gets bad weather doesn't have a Subaru dealership? We got tons of them here in Portland. We're not even really a mountain town. But like I said, Conway is expensive, but it might be worth it. Keep in mind, I, in my last one, I was talking about home prices and I said some of them are over 450,000. Some people freaked out, 450,000, who can afford that? Well, a lot of people can afford that if that's the price it's going for. If nobody can afford that price, then they don't make it that price. That's how the free market works. Conroy has a hospital called Memorial Hospital that's right in town. It's a good size hospital, should be able to take care of all your needs. If you need something else from a hospital, you're probably going to have to go to a Portland, Maine, or Concord, New Hampshire. Concord, New Hampshire is about an hour and 45 minutes away, where Portland, Maine's about an hour and 20 minutes away. When it comes to internet, you have the usual suspects. Uh, Spectrum covers 100%, they say, of uh, Conway, and you can get one gig internet from them. 
number two, Gorham, New Hampshire. Right down the road from Brutal Inn, New Hampshire, you have the town of Gorham. Gorham sits on that Andrew Scoggin River, about two hours from Concord, New Hampshire. It's also close to a whole bunch of really cool stuff. Hiking, mountain biking, skiing, snowmobiling, just to name a few. You can also hop on the Appalachian Trail here, where you might run into a shaman. At least that was one girl's experience. She said she ran into a shaman while hiking the Appalachian Trail. She told this big story about it, and he told her that she would have two children. She had four, so he was half right. <laughs> She actually went on to name her second son after the shaman. She has a son named Corky. Corky the shaman? That has to be against some spiritual law to be a shaman named Corky. Corky the shaman? A cartoon character, not a shaman. Anyway, you can hike Mount Washington or take the really cool cog railway that takes you up the top. It's really, really neat. There's so much to do here. When it comes to healthcare, you have the Andrew Scoggin Valley Hospital right up the road in Berlin, and internet will be with Spectrum. Again, gig internet out in the middle of the beautiful countryside. When it comes to buying a home here, you're currently looking at about 350,000 and above. It's a little pricey here, but in the last two months, they've sold four or five homes for under 220,000. And they've looked nice, a little older, but nice. And then on top of all that good news, their crime rate is 13% below the national average. Safe, fun, and beautiful. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There's a link down below. It is gaining steam. We'd really appreciate it if you helped it out and went over and subscribed, Watch some videos. All right, on to number one. And number one, Hillsboro, New Hampshire. Just 25 minutes west of Concord, New Hampshire, you have the town of Hillsboro. It's not really a town, it's, it's a census designated area, but most people just call it a town. From what I read, it can also be spelled Hillsboro, H-I-L-L-S-B-O-R-O, or you add the U-G-H at the end. Technically, the U-G-H goes on the end. It's a little weird. Either way you spell it, this town sits on the Kentuckook River and not too far from Franklin Pierce's homestead. In case you don't know who that is, he was our 14th president. He is also considered one of the worst worst presidents that we've ever had. C-SPAN and a bunch of presidential historians came out with a list where they ranked all the presidents. I'll leave a link below. Hillsborough has almost 6,000 residents and a very low crime rate. It's actually 59% lower than the national average. Now, the actual town only has about 2,000. But like I said, it's a census-designated area. This one's weird. So the town that's kind of there is 2,000 residents and the whole area has 6,000. Anyway, they got a lot of homes in the woods outside of town. Like every town in New Hampshire, Hampshire, they got plenty of things to do outdoors. If you haven't picked up on that yet, it snows a lot in New Hampshire. If you hate the cold and the snow, scratch Hillsboro off your list. As a matter of fact, go ahead and scratch the entire state of New Hampshire off your list. It is beautiful and you'd be missing out. As far as homes go, you can get a stunningly beautiful home in Hillsboro between $350,000 and $450,000. It does go up from there, so be prepared if you're looking. Occasionally, you might find something that's under $300,000, but most of the time, $325,000 is going to be your starting point for this town or census designated area. Okay, so the website has like three different companies that supply internet here. One is called TDS. They say they'll give you one gig. It's fiber. You also have fiber with Granite State Communication. They'll give you a gig, but probably the most reliable one is Xfinity. They're only in about 85% of the homes here, and they'll give you 1.2 gigs. So yeah one of the three should be able to work at your house if you move to Hillsborough and buy a house. Heading down the Atlantic coast, we find ourselves in Virginia. Today, we're looking at great rural towns in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Yes, it's Commonwealth, not a state. There's not much of a difference unless you're in the Commonwealth. They seem to take some kind of pride in it and they'll correct you. Virginia is a very historic state or Commonwealth. And in my opinion, it's very different depending on what side of the state you happen to be standing on. Most states are sort of like that. Virginia seems to be a little more noticeable than most states. Like I said in the other videos, I normally do top 10 lists, but not all states have 10 good rural towns and I don't want to waste your time with a bunch of places that are a reach just to get to 10. Virginia has some crime issues in their small rural towns and they seem to be lacking when it comes to decent internet. Those two things knocked a whole bunch of great small towns off this list. And for those of you who've been commenting lately about you don't need internet if you're moving out to the country, that's part of the reason you want to disconnect. Congratulations, you are a rarity these days. I'd also like to talk to you and find out what it's like still living in 1990, 22 years later. 
people need internet these days, especially if you're working from home. But the focus of this series is rural towns. That normally implies a good distance outside a metro area. When it comes to towns in this video, we're looking for that sweet spot, a decent place to live that isn't too close to a major city, it's easy on the crime rate, it's not five hours away from a hospital, and it's not so far out in the sticks that you get horrible internet. Those are the requirements. Get it? Got it? Good. Let's take a look. Number six, Floyd, Virginia. Floyd sits about 45 minutes west of Rocky Mount, Virginia. The town of Floyd was originally called Jacksonville. They named it after President Andrew Jackson. He was, you know, the man in the White House when the town kind of came to be. The name was subsequently changed to Floyd for Virginia Governor John Floyd. Now, he was a pretty interesting guy. He was the governor of Virginia, but he's the one that actually started pushing for the United States to kind of claim Oregon as part of the United States. After the War of 1812, both Britain and the United States had claimed Oregon, but nobody was really pressing the issue and there were no outposts or anything like that out there at the time. He's the one that pushed for it to happen. They named the town after him. These days, it's a small rural town that's got a population of about 600. It's a nice looking place. The countryside here is amazing. It's nice. It is a great place to live. They got a crime rate that sits 14% below the national average, which is outstanding. When it comes to health care, they have some health clinics in town, nothing big, and a few doctors off his family practice, things like that. If you need a hospital. They have the Carilion New River Valley Medical Center, which is about 25 minutes to the north. So they get a thumbs up for both healthcare and crime rate. When it comes to internet, not a problem. Now, keep in mind, the internet numbers they give you are mostly for the downtown and surrounding area. The further you get out into the rural portions, eh, you got some, you know, you got to question them if they're going to be able to deliver internet to your place before you buy someplace. Always keep that in mind. And as time goes on, that will become less and less of an issue, especially with things like what Elon Musk is doing with his new satellite internet thing. It's supposed to be pretty good. We'll see how it pans out in the next years. But right now you have a few choices. You have citizens internet, broadband, whatever you want to call it. They offer one gig and they say they cover 99% of Floyd. They also have one called All Points Broadband. It only gives you 25 Mbps and that covers about 25% of the town. So they get a thumbs up for internet, which to be perfectly honest, I was surprised that they had as good a coverage in Floyd because Floyd is not a big place. Uh, there's only 600 people that live here and they got decent internet. Floyd also gets a big thumbs up for their real estate. They have a lot of things for sale, both in town and the outskirts. And it's a wide range of prices too. I've seen some decent ones here, just going by Zillow that are under 200,000 that are in town. Four bedroom, three bath, $189,000. Older home looks decent. They got some other ones, 450, but 350 to 450 is what you're probably looking for to find something nice in and around town. If you want to go outside of town, you could find some older homes that need a little work that'll probably come with a couple acres and those go for about 200,000 as well. Here's something to keep in mind about all Virginia towns. They're really close to nature, almost always. That means hiking, trails, fishing, whatever you want to do, you're going to find it here. Virginia's just that way. Sure, when you get over into the cities like Richmond and stuff like that, you're not going to find as much, but most of the stuff we're talking about on this list is rural. Rural always has hiking. Virginia has really good hiking. Number five, Abingdon, Virginia. Abingdon is a nice rural town about 20 minutes north of the Tennessee border and about two hours southwest of Roanoke, Virginia. Again, this is a great place if you like the outdoors. As a matter of fact, you can find a trailhead for the Virginia Creeper Trail in Abingdon for you outdoor types. This offers the possibility of seeing some amazing wildlife and some awesome landscapes. It is kind of big for a rural town, but just outside of a great downtown, you have wilderness and farms everywhere. This is a great place to live if you do want to be away from big cities. I mean, Bristol's right down the road, but Bristol's really not that big. It has a population of 8,000, so that's pretty good size, and they have a crime rate that is 39% lower than the national average. That is outstanding. Now, when it comes to internet, you can get one gig from Xfinity, which covers 90% of the town. They also have Point Broadband, which offers one gig, and they also offer 60% of the town. So both crime and internet get a thumbs up. It's a big thumbs up for healthcare right outside of town. They have Johnston Memorial Hospital, emergency room, the whole bit. It's also a great place if you want to buy a house. They have a wide range of prices and property sizes and all that good stuff. Currently, they have homes as low as 200000 but go up to about 
550,000. I would say a majority of the good ones you'll find between 250 and 325,000. And I'm talking really nice homes, big lots. You're not right on top of each other, just nice homes. So yeah, they definitely get a thumbs up for real estate. Number four, Coburn, Virginia. Coburn is a mountain town on the west side of Virginia, about an hour north of Kingsport, Tennessee, on the Guest River. This is a great place for hiking, fishing, and camping, and it's also a great place to get lost in the woods. Apparently, this happens a handful of times annually in these parts. The town of Coburn was originally named Guest Station after an explorer and surveyor, Christopher Gist. If you've ever played the game Assassin's Creed, he's in there. But he was a real man, explorer, and surveyor, and they named the town after him. Even though his last name spelt G-I-S-T, they went with Guest. And then they changed it to Coburn after a railroad chief engineer. You know, when I do these things, it's just, I'm always amazed how often rail lines have shaped this country, whether it's the name of a place, whether there's a town someplace because of the rail. I just don't think people these days realize how important trains were to this country. So many of these little towns named different things after rail people because there was really nothing to the town and the rail was like a godsend. The now they can get supplies, the town will grow, more people will come to the area. It's really interesting. When it comes to internet, they're doing really good here. Now I'll tell you right now, more often than not, Mountain towns are the ones that have horrible internet. It's just hard to get the line out to a lot of these different places, especially when they're up the hills, off the road. It's kind of hard, but they're doing pretty good here. They get one gig from Xfinity, and Xfinity covers 85% of the town. You also have Mountain Net, which gets one gig. They cover 35% of the town. You got a couple other ones called Point Broadband, 10% of the town, and then you always have the satellite internet. So they get a thumbs up for internet. Now, when it comes to healthcare, they're doing pretty good. They have like a doctor's office in town nothing major but down the road about 15 minutes away in Norton you have the Norton Community Hospital that's a good sized place has just about everything you need anything past that you're going to probably have to go down to Knoxville or something like that so they get a thumbs up for health care Number three, Strasburg, Virginia, or Strasburg, Strasburg. I've actually heard people call it both. They kind of put this owl on there like Strasburg, but it's really Strasburg, and I'm sure a bunch of people are going to comment in the comment section, so uh, buckle up for that one. Strasburg sits about an hour and a half west of Washington, D.C., on the North Fork of the Shenandoah River. This is a beautiful town of about 6,500 residents. Besides having great stats, all the way around, I included this one for the veterans. They have some great VA hospitals that are within an hour away, hour and a half if you want to go into DC. For everyone else, they get a thumbs up for healthcare because they have a few family practices in town along with their urgent care. Beyond that, you have Warren Memorial Hospital about 20 minutes away in Front Royal. So they got plenty of health care. They're doing great. They get a thumbs up for crime, too. It's 51% lower than the national average, which is outstanding. Now, their internet, I'm going to give it a faded thumbs up because they have a company called Chantel. They have one gig, but it only covers 85% of the town. They also offer 100 megabytes per second, and that covers about 90% of the town. I'm sure some people in the neighborhood or in this town are getting hosed. So they get a faded thumbs up. When you're looking at real estate, they have quite a few things to choose from, and they range right now from 200,000 up to about 700,000. Most of the time you're lucky to see something between 200 and 250,000 pop up. But what you're really looking at is like 400 to 500,000 and that'll get you something decent, something place nice to live. But this place gets high marks because it is a beautiful little town. There's plenty of fishing, hiking, camping. You're right there next to West Virginia, which is an outdoor paradise. Overall, this is one of my favorites on the list, and we're not doing this in any special order. I just really like this one. Number two, Cape Charles, Virginia. Cape Charles is located close to the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay on Virginia's eastern shore. This place was founded in 1884 as a planned community by, guess what, a railroad company. Well, ferry and railroad company. This is not a place for people that are looking to retire on a budget, or let's say you work from home and you're not killing it in the salary department. This is not your place. This place is pricey because it sits on the Chesapeake Bay. They have a golf course and they have like a marina for your boat. But it is definitely away from 
any metro area. The closest metro area is about 45 minutes away and you gotta cross the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. And that's where you'd have to go if you have to go to a big hospital. They do have a medical center in town with some doctors and stuff like that, but anything big, you're gonna have to head out to Virginia Beach which is a little less than an hour away. This is a nice beach and rural community. I was watching a video about a guy that lived there and he said that him and his girlfriend at the time, they've now been married like 30 years, they came out here for one of her friend's weddings. And it was the first time he'd ever been to Cape Charles and he was like, we're moving here. And a few years later they did and they never left. I mean, how could you not want to live in a place that has an art thing on the coast that just says love? Look at that. They only have around a thousand people living here and they have a crime rate that's 54% lower than the national average and that's outstanding so they get a thumbs up for that one. When it comes to internet, they're doing pretty good, especially being this far away from everything. You can get one gig from Eastern Shore of Virginia Broadband Authority and they say they cover 95% of the town so they get a thumbs up for that one. Now, like I said, it gets expensive, and one of the most expensive things here is real estate. Currently, they have three things for sale, and they're going $4 million. But back in February and March, they did have some homes that were for three hundred and three hundred fifty thousand. dollars But in my opinion, you're going to need to spend at least six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars $700,000 to get something decent here. You just got to keep watching and hope something pops up that you kind of like. So they get a faded thumbs up for real estate because they don't have a lot to choose from, and when they do have something to choose, it's kind of expensive. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There's a link down below. All right, on to number one. And number one, Amherst, Virginia. Amherst is a town of about 2,500 that sits about 20 minutes north of Lynchburg, Virginia. This is a nice place to live if you're into wine or antiques. Honestly, if you Google things to do in Amherst, seven of the top 10 things are wine or antiques. This is a great place for retirees that may need medical specialists. Amherst has a few doctors and a medical clinic, but Lynchburg is 20 minutes down the road and they'll have everything you need. They have some really good hospitals that have very high marks. Yes, I looked it up. Amherst was actually founded in 1807 and originally was known as the Oaks and then Seven Oaks and it began as a stagecoach station for the Charlottesville Lynchburg Road. Finally, a place that didn't start because of a train. Amherst, like so many other places in Virginia, just it's great for people that love the outdoors. If you know anything about the Pacific Northwest, this part of Virginia kind of reminds me of it. Everything's green and it seems like there's a pond or a creek around every bend. But like I said, they got great health care, so they get a thumbs up here for that. Their crime rate is 73% lower than the national average, so they get a big thumbs up for that one. When it comes to their internet, eh, they're getting a faded thumbs up. They have Xfinity 1 gig, but it only covers about 58% of the town. They also have another one called SCS Broadband. They offer 1 gig, but that only covers 25% of the town. They have some other ones that give like 25 Mbps, but that's really not the greatest. When it comes to real estate, they get a big thumbs up because they have everything. They have a few homes for 200,000. They've got a bunch for between 300 and 450,000. Of course, if you want to dump a million and a half on a piece of property, you get 34 acres and a really nice house. So they're all over the place and they got a handful to choose from. In the last six months, they've sold like eight for under 250,000. So they got a price range for just about everyone. All right, now for our second southern state, the great state of Alabama. Do you like warm summers, sweet tea, and crimson tide football? If so, it's time to sell your home and move to Alabama. Alabama is a great state to relocate to, especially if you're retired. The cost of living is one of the lowest in the country, and it has very affordable real estate. More and more people are looking to move to Alabama for retirement instead of Florida or Arizona. It's just a little bit cheaper here. In my opinion, most of the great places to live in Alabama are in the suburbs. Some of the suburbs here are amazing, but they do still have some great small rural towns. And that's the focus of these videos. What we're looking for in this series is that sweet spot, small rural towns that are decent places to live, aren't too close to any major cities, they're easy on the crime rate and not five hours away from a hospital or so far out in the sticks that you can't get decent internet. Those things knock a lot of nice rural towns off these lists. Crime and internet seem to be the ones that knock most of Alabama's rural towns off today's video. Get it? Got it? Good. Let's take a look. Number five, Cedar Bluff, 
Alabama. Cedar Bluff is a town on Weiss Lake, about an hour and a half northeast of Birmingham, near the Georgia border. This area is known for its crappie fishing. It's spelt crappy, but it's pronounced crappie fishing. It's type of fish. It's not just horrible fishing. Anyway, this is a great lake town to retire. The cost of living is below the national average, and it's on a lake. That type of thing never happens. Well, I shouldn't say never. Hardly ever happens. Cedar Bluff is a nice lake community with a lot of nature and farmland around it. The town is kind of spread out and they have about 1,900 residents and it won't seem like it because, like I said, it's spread out. The crime rate here is 16% lower than the national average. Like I was saying, the cost of living in Cedar Bluff is 25% lower than the national average. When it comes to their real estate, they get a thumbs up. You can get a home here for under 200,000 within walking distance from the lake and nice homes on the water start around 400,000. Now, if you want to buy lake property and build or let's say park a motorhome on it, even better. Waterfront lots start around fifteen or twenty thousand dollars. When it comes to the internet, they get a big thumbs up here. They have TDS internet, which gives one gig fiber and it covers ninety eight percent of the town. They also have Spectrum one gig. It only covers about twenty percent of the town, but at least some of you would have an option there. Healthcare gets a big thumbs up too. Cedar Bluff doesn't have anything in town. They have an EMS there, like emergency services thing. But right across the Cedar Bluff Causeway, about eight minutes away, you have Cherokee Medical Center. Eight minutes away, that might as well be in town. And that's a pretty good sized place. Along with that, that whole area right there by Cherokee Medical Center has different doctor's offices and orthodontists and all that good stuff. Number four, Owens Crossroad, Alabama. Owens Crossroad is a small community about 25 minutes southeast of downtown Huntsville. This is almost too close to a major city, but it's just far enough outside to make this list. The area has a history that can be dated back to the 1800s. Pioneers drifted into this area from Tennessee, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia with names like Wood, Parker, Craig, Maples, Carpenter, but a gentleman named Thomas J. Owens had migrated from Virginia and was the first to build his family home near the intersection of two crossroads, so it became known as Owens Crossroad. Owens Crossroad has a population of about 2,500 residents. Now, they've jumped up in population quite a bit. In the 2010 census, they only had 1,500, so they gained about 1,000 people for this small area. And they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It's 45% lower than the national average, which is pretty good. Their internet, they also get a giant thumbs up because they have Xfinity, one gig. That covers 81% of the town. They have AT&T Fiber, five gig, which covers 60% of the town. And list this, it gets better. Google Fiber, two gig, covers 80% of the town. You got some really good options here. Great area if you're a remote worker with that kind of internet. You know, you're working for Geico Insurance or something, working from home. This is a great place to live. I mean, if you're web hosting, that's enough internet to do all the things you need to do there. You could start up an email marketing firm in this small town. When it comes to healthcare, they also get a thumbs up. You have Crestwood Medical Center on the south side of the Huntsville metro area. It's only about 20 minutes away from Owens Crossing and they've got ER and everything you're gonna need. It's a pretty big place. Owens Crossroad gets a thumbs up when it comes to their real estate. They've got a lot of new construction, a lot of new homes have been built in this area, and they start off around $250,000, $270,000. That's not bad for new construction. You could find older homes for under $250,000 on the outskirts of town that are in decent shape. The occasional one will pop up that's under $200,000 that might need a little work. The area is surrounded by creeks and rivers, so if you like fishing, I'm sure you're not going to be bored here. Number three, Springville, Alabama. Springville is about 30 minutes northeast of Birmingham, just outside the Birmingham metro area. This is another one that's on the outskirts of a major metro area, but it's still plenty rural. They have new construction all over the town center of Springville, but they also have older homes and land outside of town that really show Springville as a rural place to live. There seems to be a little confusion when it comes to how many people live here. Wikipedia says they have 4,700 residents. I looked at the U.S. Census. It says they have 4,200 residents, so it's somewhere around there. They get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It's actually 57% lower than the national average, which is outstanding. Their internet also gets a big thumbs up. They have Spectrum offering one gig cable internet to about 65% of the town. They also have Windstream offering one gig fiber to 98.2% of the town. So you have some options. They have like three others offering cable and fiber broadband, but they only cover like four and 10% of the town. Those are JTM broadband and uh, GoNet speed. 
so you got plenty of options. When it comes to healthcare, they also get a thumbs up. They have quite a few doctors and clinics in town, but if you really need a hospital, you have Ascension St. Vincent East, which is about 25 minutes to the southeast near Birmingham. They also have one about 25 minutes to the north. If you need some real estate, like I'd said, they have a lot of new construction in and around town. Those start off around 300,000 and work their way up into the 700,000. Some of them are really, really nice. But on the outskirts of town, you can still find things for around two hundred and twenty to two hundred and seventy thousand dollars that look nice and maybe might need a little work. Nothing major. All in all, Springville's a great place to live, especially if you want to be near a major city, but still live the rural lifestyle. Gives you the best of both worlds. This part of Alabama is great for fishing. Actually, you know, I, that's really hard to find an area in Alabama that's not like downtown Birmingham or Montgomery that doesn't have great fishing. This whole state's like that. Mississippi and Georgia are the same way. Spent a lot of time in both those states, and yeah, you could fish anywhere you want. Dig a line in, you're bound to pull something out. Number two, Hayden, Alabama. Hayden, Alabama is a great small rural town that has one requirement all good southern small towns should have, and really any small rural town. No sidewalks. Yeah, that's like a requirement. Now, to be fair, they do have like a, I don't know, 20 foot stretch in front of the middle school, but that's about it. They don't have any sidewalks anywhere, and if you ask anyone why they don't have sidewalks, they probably look at you, why do we need sidewalks? Then they go on to some story about how some Yankee came down here one time, suggested sidewalks, and they chased him out of town. Stories like that usually are finished up with, that was right before the war. Hayden sits about 30 minutes north of Birmingham, Alabama, and just east of a place called Smoke Rise. Yeah, not kidding, it's called Smoke Rise. Hayden has a population of about 1,200 residents, and they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It's 61% lower than the national average. If you want to get some internet in Hayden so you could uh, Google why they don't have uh, sidewalks, you got a lot of choices, so they get a big thumbs up. You have AT&T Fiber that covers almost 70% of the town, and they offer 5 gigs. Outstanding. They have Spectrum that offers 1 gig to a little over 50% of the town. You go down to JTM Broadband, 1 gig fiber to about 45% of the town. Then you have GoNet Speed Fiber, 1 gig, and they have that almost 30% of the town. So a lot of options and a lot of good speeds here. When it comes to healthcare, they get a thumbs up because right down the road, just outside of town, about eight minutes away, they have an urgent care. If you need to go to the hospital, you can go right down into Birmingham about 30 minutes away. That might be a pain because you're going in the city. You could just head east and go to the Ascension St. Vincent Blount Hospital there. That's only like 30 minutes away as well. When it comes to real estate, Hayden is going to get a faded thumbs up because they only got a couple places for sale and two of them are lots, a couple acres going for about $25,000. They also have 53 acres being sold in town. That's going for $400,000. Now, on the outskirts of town, you can find some homes right now that are around $200,000 that probably need a little work, but they're only $200,000 and they usually come with an acre or two. Not a bad place to live, especially when you consider such a low crime rate. It's really rural. It's a nice place to live. I wouldn't mind living here. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There's a link down below. Love it if you went over there and watched some videos and subscribed. Subscribe to this channel. Give some videos a big thumbs up here, too, while you're at it. It's free. All right, on to number one. And number one, Marion, Alabama. Marion sits about 90 minutes west of Montgomery, kind of the midway point between Montgomery and Meridian, Mississippi. This is one of those great southern towns with the town square that has the county courthouse right in the middle of it and shops surrounding it. Just the way an American small town should be laid out. This used to be Creek Territory, Creek Indians. It was originally founded in 1819 as Muckle Ridge. In 1822, the city was renamed in honor of Francis Marion, the Swamp Fox, hero of the American Revolutionary War. Marion incorporated the town the same year and later became Perry County's second county seat because the old one, Perry Ridge, was deemed unsuitable. Marion has about 3,500 residents and they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It's actually 76% lower than the national average. That is outstanding, especially for Alabama. The only knock on this place is their internet. They don't have the best. They're getting a faded thumbs up. They have AT&T DSL, which covers about 70% of the town, but it only gets up to 100 Mbps. 
After that, you get Pine Belt Communications, which offers 100 Mbps. They only cover like 20% of the town, but that's fiber. You know, after that, you better hope that Starlink works pretty good here. So yeah, faded thumbs up. When it comes to health here, they're going to get a thumbs up because they have a couple different clinics and a few doctors in town, along with an urgent care type place. But if you need a legit hospital, you got Vaughn Regional Medical Center down in Selma, and that's about 30 minutes away. When it comes to real estate, we're going to give them a thumbs up because they got a lot to choose from and it's relatively inexpensive. Sure, most of the homes that are really inexpensive are going to need some work, but you got some choices. Houses here start off around $65,000 and work their way up to about $450,000. Now, anything below $200,000, you're going to need to do some work. Anything above $200,000 is probably ready to go. They have some beautiful old homes that look like they were well-maintained or recently redone, and those go for about $125,000. This is another part of Alabama that has creeks, lakes, rivers everywhere. So if you like to fish, you like to be on the water, you could pick a lot worse places. They also have the Marion Military Institute in town, so in case you need a place to store your kids. This is a beautiful part of Alabama, though. If you ever get a chance, go out here and visit. Almost going directly north, we run into Minnesota, frozen state. Let's take a look. Today we're looking at great rural towns in Minnesota. This is like the 10th or 12th in this series, where we do a little research on the state and find out their best rural towns and where you'd want to move. A few things about rural Minnesota towns. They rarely have jobs, so you have to bring one or not need one like most states. And the weather can be challenging, like very challenging. Now we're not gonna get into the weather on every single one. Let's just assume they have very cold winters and their summers are kind of pleasant. I'll give you an example, warm season lasts about three and a half months from late May to mid-September with an average daily temperature around 71 degrees Fahrenheit. Now here's where the challenging part comes in. The cold season lasts for about three and a half months from late November to about early to mid-March with an average daily high of about 36 degrees Fahrenheit. The coldest month of the year in Minneapolis is January with an average low of 10 degrees Fahrenheit and a high of 24 degrees. If you haven't watched this series before, what we're looking for is that sweet spot. A decent place to live that isn't too close to any major cities, it's easy on the crime rate, not five hours away from a hospital, or so far out in the sticks you get horrible internet. Those things knock a lot of small towns off the list. Now, in past videos we brought up the internet speeds in every single town. What I've done is just kind of eliminate that and not included any towns that have under 100 MBP. Yes. Like I've said before, not all states have 10 good rural towns, and I don't want to waste your time with some places that are a bit of a reach just to get up to 10, so we're going with what we could find. Got it? Get it? Good. Let's take a look. Number seven, Crookston, Minnesota. Crookston sits in the northwest section of Minnesota near the North Dakota border. The nearest city would be Grand Forks, North Dakota, about 35 minutes northwest of Crookston. And it's also 20 minutes north of Climax, Minnesota. Oh, yeah. Present-day Crookston first saw settlements by non-Indian people around 1872. These days, it's home to the University of Minnesota at Crookston and has the Red Lake River flowing right through town. They get a thumbs up for their crime rate because they enjoy a crime rate that is 29% lower than the national average. Healthcare here is not a worry. They've got the Riverview Health, which has an ER and everything you need. Anything past that, you're going to have to go to Fargo or Grand Forks. Real estate also gets a big thumbs up here. They have nice homes that start off around 200000 and really nice homes start off around 300000 work their way up to about 500,000. This is a great town to raise a family and a great town if you like the outdoors. They got plenty of it around you and they got good fishing. I don't know if you can fish for muskie around here, but whenever I talk about Minnesota fishing, I remember a guy saying that there's been more than one fist fights on the docks because of a muskie exaggeration. Number six, Hutchinson, Minnesota. Hutchinson is a rural town about an hour west of Minneapolis. It's almost too big for this list with a population of 13,000, but it's definitely rural. There's not much around it, but farmland and trees. The closest big city is Minneapolis. I include bigger rural towns because not everyone wants to live in a tiny rural town of 200 people. Some people want to find a rural town that's just away from the big city. This one fits that bill. The Hutchinson Family Singers, which were a big deal back in the late 18, early 1900s, are credited with founding 
founding the town in November of 1855. The post office has been in operation in Hutchinson since 1856, and the city was incorporated in 1904. Hutchinson sits on Otter Lake and the South Fork of the Crow River, which flows right through downtown. If you want to live in the middle of Minnesota, this is probably a good choice. They get a thumbs up for their crime rate, which is 30% lower than the national average. They also get a thumbs up when it comes to their health care. They have Hutchinson Health Hospital, which has an emergency room, urgent care, and just about everything you're going to need. Anything beyond that, you're going to have to go to Minneapolis. You know, and they got other doctors and dentists around town too. So that's the benefit of having a town of 13,000 people. Your health care issues are not really much of a worry. If you want to buy a house, they get a thumbs up for that also. You can get decent homes here for around $150,000. Nice homes start off around $200,000 with really nice ones getting into about $350,000 on up. They do have some million dollar homes here. Obviously, they're going to be down by the river and they're going to be really nice. But they have some on the outskirts of town. If you really want to live rural, you can get anywhere from two to five acres for around $400,000. Not bad. Number five, Long Prairie, Minnesota. Long Prairie sits on the Long Prairie River about an hour northwest of St. Cloud, Minnesota. The history of this area dates back to the time when the land was inhabited first by the Sioux. In 1845, the U.S. government selected the location known as Long Prairie now as a site for a U.S. Indian agency. In the 1830s, white settlers claimed and began developing the land around what is now Long Prairie. Long Prairie these days has about 1,200 residents and they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It is 39% lower than the national average. Not bad. If you like golfing and you like fishing, this is a solid place to live. Of course, like we said earlier, the winters might limit when you can hit the links. When it comes to health care, they get a big thumbs up because they had Center Care Long Prairie, which was a care center, had all the things you need, and that was an older building. Back a few years ago, they built a new area, which is a lot bigger and a lot nicer. Brand new facilities, emergency room, all the good stuff you're going to need. They even have a mental health center here. You want to put down roots and buy some real estate in Long Prairie? They get a thumbs up for that also. 140000 is probably where you're going to start looking for a decent home. They do have some cheaper, but they're probably going to need a little work. But 140 should get you into something that's relatively new and in decent shape. If you want something really nice, you're looking at around 300000 350000 Now, I know there are some parts of the country where 350000 makes you spit out your sweet tea. But if you're coming from someplace like New York City, anywhere in California, Oregon for that matter, you're thinking that's pretty cheap. If you're living in San Francisco you probably have enough to buy a home here in your checking account. Not a bad Minnesota town, though. Number four, Granite Falls, Minnesota. Granite Falls was platted in 1872. The city was named for deposits of granite rock in the area. Their high school, baseball, football team, whatever, their mascot is the Kilowatts. You know, probably about four years ago, I did a video on the worst high school mascot names. I don't know how I missed this one. The Kilowatts? This is their freaking logo. Granite Falls is about two hours west of Minneapolis on the Minnesota River, and they have a hydroelectric plant there, which is where they got the name for the high school mascot. Granite Falls has a population of about 2,500 residents, and they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It's 44% below the national average. If you're looking for health care here, you don't have to worry about it. They got a decent sized hospital with emergency room and everything you need. And along with that, they got dentists and doctors scattered throughout the town. If you decide you want to buy a home here, they get a thumbs up for that too. They've got quite a few places for just about every price range, starting off around 70,000 for something that's going to need some work all the way up to 400,000. Realistically though, you should be expecting to pay about 250,000 for something decent. And that's all in town. If you want to get in the outskirts of town, it goes a little bit cheaper and you usually get an acre or two. And they've got plenty of lots for sale right now, starting off at $1,400 for like a quarter of an acre. Number three, Bagley, Minnesota. Bagley was settled in the late 1800s, and it was named for Summer C. Bagley, a local lumberman. Bagley is about two hours northeast of Fargo on the Clearwater River. Interesting fact about Bagley, on February 13th, 1996, the Bagley varsity hockey team played their last outdoor hockey game. They were the last Minnesota State High School League program to play outdoors. Bagley has a golf course and some decent schools. Bagley has a population of about 1,500 residents, and they get a thumbs up for their crime rate, which is 45% lower than the national average. They also get a thumbs up for health care. They got Sanford Bagley Medical Center, which is a pretty good sized place for such a small town. They have emergency room, all that other good stuff. On their website, they make a point to let you know that they have all the stuff you need for your mammogram, and early detection is key. We've lost far too many moms, grandmas, sisters, 
mothers and wives to breast cancer. So that's always, always important. Bagley also gets a thumbs up for their home prices. Their real estate is not bad. They've got some vacant lots like on the lake or pond or whatever that are about eight acres for $54,000. They got another one that's a little outside of town. That's a bunch of acres, 25 for 39,000. So they've got a lot of land for sale. But if you start looking at the houses, a decent house starts off a little over $100,000. But realistically, 200 should get you something really nice. They got one in here, five bedrooms for 400,000 that if I lived in the area, I'd buy it. It's got that whole cabin vibe. I love that. Bagley is definitely a cold place. It's towards the upper part of Minnesota where it gets really cold. Number two, Marshall, Minnesota. Back to one that's probably close to being a little too big for this list. You got Marshall, Minnesota. Marshall, Minnesota is really a rural town. If you look at the place from the satellite view, it is surrounded by miles and miles of farmland. Marshall sits about three hours west of Minneapolis and about an hour and a half north of Sioux Falls, North Dakota. I love Sioux Falls. It's one of my favorite North Dakota towns. Just kidding. It's in South Dakota. Come on, be honest. How many were typing out their comments? I like Sioux Falls though. It's not a bad place to hang out. But Marshall is a good sized small town out in the middle of the prairie. They got a golf course. They sit right on the Redwood River, which isn't terribly big. It's a glorified creek, but you can still do some fishing there. Golf, fishing, what more could you want? Besides a little more sunshine, so you could do both of those things. Marshall was platted in 1872 when the railroad extended to this point, and it's home of the Southwest Minnesota State University. If you want to be one of the 13,000 people that live here, you get to enjoy a nice crime rate. They get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It's 56% lower than the national average. They also get a thumbs up for their health care. They got a pretty good sized place, a Vera Marshall Regional Medical Center, emergency room. They've got a kidney institute, everything you're going to need you're gonna find here. You got a pretty cool water tower sitting right out front also. And it's not just the hospital. Like a lot of these small towns, they have a lot of doctor's offices. Uh, a whole bunch of them clumped together to the east of the medical center. When it comes to real estate, they're getting a faded thumbs up. And there's one reason for this. I think they're a little more expensive than they should be. This is out in the middle of nowhere in Minnesota. It's a good sized town, yes, but they're looking 340 for duplexes. I mean, one side of a duplex. They got new housing areas where they're selling lots and then you got to put the house on there and those are going for 40,000. If you want something decent, you're probably looking at about 280 to $320,000 and they go all the way up. A lot of the nicer homes are around $500,000, 480, 520, somewhere in there. Other than that, this is not a bad place to live. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There's a link down below. Head on over there and give some videos a big thumbs up and do it for this one too. All right, on to number one. And number one. Goodhue, Minnesota. Goodhue, Minnesota is southeast of Minneapolis, about 20 minutes south of Red Wing, Minnesota and the Mississippi River. This is a small rural community of just 1,200 residents. This town is surrounded by farmland and grain silos. This town reminds me of one of those places where, you know, older gentlemen go down to the hardware store pretty much just to talk to someone, which is great. That's kind of an American pastime. These days, the younger people, they do the same thing, but they go to coffee places. If you like cold weather, and snow, this is a good place to live. They get quite a lot of it. Like I said, they got 1,200 residents and they get a big thumbs up for their crime rate. It's 86% lower than the national average. Outstanding, good hue. When it comes to healthcare, uh, they're gonna get a faded thumbs up. They have a chiropractor in town. That's all I could find and anything you're gonna need past that, you're just gonna have to head up to Red Wing, which is, like I said, 20 minutes away. But I'll tell you what, if you pinch a nerve in your neck, you're covered in good hue. Speaking of that, I gotta make an appointment with my chiropractor. If you want to buy a home here, they're going to get a thumbs up. They have a lot of lots for sale, like we just talked about in Marshall. And they range from thirty-eight dollars to $45,000. If you want to buy a home, they have a few for sale, but starting money you're going to need is about $225,000. And that looks decent. Everything else is up from there to sixty-nine dollars and three twenty. dollars So they got some options and they're not crazy expensive. I'm looking at what has sold in the last like five months. And most things go for around $225,000, $250,000. You do find some nice ones occasionally, it looks like, or under 200,000, so that's good. All right, heading back south, we run into North Carolina. I've mentioned this before on this channel, but I have had so many people leave comments that North Carolina isn't a southern state. They think this because it's got the word north in it. it has nothing to do with being the north side of the country, it's just north of the other Carolina, South Carolina. 
Today we're looking at great rural towns in the Tar Heel State, North Carolina. North Carolina is a great southern state that has some great landscapes and amazing cities. Sadly, they don't have too many amazing rural towns. Poverty and crime are always on the menu in North Carolina small towns. North Carolina and really the entire south have some tragically run down towns that have epidemic level poverty that's been going on for decades. But we were still able to find six great rural towns. In this series, what we're looking for is the sweet spot, a decent place to live that isn't too close to a major city, it's easy on the crime rate, it's not five hours away from a hospital, and so far out in the sticks, you can't get decent internet. All right, let's take a look. Number six, Brevard, North Carolina. Brevard, North Carolina is a mountain town about 45 minutes south of Asheville, North Carolina, not too far from the South Carolina border. This one has a little bit larger of a population than I like to have on these rural towns, but there's a reason for that. It's kind of a big downtown area. In the outskirts, there's a lot of rural property. So they got a nice downtown with a lot of things. You just got to get your houses on the outside and it's rural. They have a population of 7,700 residents and they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. Their crime rate's actually 24% lower than the national average. Where this place stands out is their downtown. If you go downtown, it's a very unique downtown and you'll see things about white squirrels everywhere. There's like white squirrel restaurants or whatever and then you'll see and pictures everywhere of white squirrels. And that's because they have these white squirrels that actually live in town. They're very unique. From a distance, they kind of look like little miniature polar bears or albino squirrels. They're very unique to this area. Now, the reason for these, at least the story is, that back in like the 30s, a circus train was coming through town and overturned. Well, on board the overturned train, they had these squirrels, they got loose, and now they've been calling Brevard their home ever since. Brevard also gets a big thumbs up for their internet. They're doing outstanding. First of all, they they have Google Fiber, which is excellent internet. Sadly, only about 5% of the town can get it. But they have an internet company called Comporium, which gives one gig to 95% of the town. So that's outstanding. When you're looking at healthcare, they get another big thumbs up. They have a really good sized place called the Transylvania Regional Hospital, along with a few other doctor's offices and some family practices. Transylvania Regional Hospital is going to cover pretty much everything you need. They got an emergency room and all that other stuff. Anything beyond that, you head on up to Asheville, 45 minutes north. When it comes to real estate, they get a thumbs up also because they have a lot of different choices. Your choices start off around $250,000 and work their way up. They've got probably 10 places for sale right now that range anywhere from $250,000 and there's a couple that are up in the uh, $500,000 area. Outside of town, they always seem to come with like a creek and a couple acres. So that's a definite plus. If you're into fishing and outdoor stuff, especially hiking in the mountains and mountain biking, this is a great place to live. Number five, Clyde, North Carolina. Clyde, North Carolina is another western North Carolina mountain town about 30 minutes west of Asheville. It's just up the road from the last one, Brevard, North Carolina. Clyde sits on the Pigeon River, which if you like fishing, you're right. The Great Smoky Mountains are right out your back door. There is plenty to do outdoors here. Hike, mountain bike, camp, fish, hunt, if that's what you're into. And the people here... They enjoy that stuff. They got about 1,200 residents living here and they get a big thumbs up for their crime rate. Their crime rate is 51% lower than the national average, which is outstanding, especially when you see some of the other small towns or rural towns in North Carolina. They can get pretty scary. This is definitely a good place to live. Good news, they get a thumbs up here for their internet. They have Spectrum, which offers one gig to about 75% of the town. Then you have the usual ones that offer you nothing worth having. And this place also has Carolina Mountain Cable Vision, which offers 200 Mbps to about 20% of the town. That's also cable. When it comes to healthcare, Clyde gets a big thumbs up. That's a thing here in North Carolina. For some reason, they always get the highest ratings for healthcare. Access to healthcare is usually one of the biggest things that drags a place down. North Carolina has plenty of medical clinics, hospitals, doctors everywhere for some reason. Clyde's no exception. Clyde being situated between Waynesville and Asheville, you'd think that they wouldn't have their own good size hospital. People just go down the road to one of those. But no, they do. It's called Haywood Regional Medical Center, emergency room, all that good stuff. On top of that, they have some doctors and clinics and things like that. Real estate, they get another thumbs up. You got a lot of options here. And those options start off around 185000 and go up to about 650000 if you're looking for something decent, though, you're probably looking right around 300000 to 400000 We'll get you something really nice, probably has an acre, and I'm sure it's going to have a creek nearby. 
Number four, Seven Devils, North Carolina. You heard me right, it's called Seven Devils. To people that live in this area, what's wrong with that name? To everyone else in the country, that sounds a little weird. But this is a great place to live, and it doesn't have a big population. They only have a population of 280 residents. That's a small town. Now, the interesting thing about this place, it's not a normal town. It really started off as a resort community. Let me explain. In the mid-1960s, seven men from Winston-Salem established this unincorporated community, which is called Seven Devils with the vision of creating a recreational resort. So it's big in skiing, mountain biking, and stuff like that for the longest time. And then it became known as like one of the largest winter tubing place, like snow tubing. It's apparently amazing. It was started off as a resort area and eventually became incorporated into a town in 1979. Now there are people that live there. There's 62 households and about 40 families. That's according to the 2010 census. Now in 2019, they estimate that's a about 220 people live there full time with another 60 or so that come in for seasonal stuff or half the year. There's retirees and stuff that live here. And it's not just seven devils. Their surrounding area is part of the same community and they get a big thumbs up for their crime rate. It's actually 54% lower than the national average. I put this on here because it's like, you know, it's weird. It's not really a traditional town, but it is at the same time. But there's some really cool things here. First of all, all the skiing, all the hiking, all the tubing, all the winter stuff is going on here, mountain biking, and then you have a bunch of golf courses. In the immediate area, there's like seven different golf courses. And Seven Devils isn't the only one on this list that has that problem. Too many golf courses? I mean, if you're a golfer, that's never a problem. But yeah, that's a thing in North Carolina. When it comes to internet, they're doing outstanding. They got a company called SkyBest. They offer one gig fiber internet to 100% of the town, which is outstanding. Then you also have Spectrum, which offers it to 98% of the town. You also get a gig there too. So they get a big thumbs up for their internet. The only knock that Seven Devils gets is their healthcare. They don't have anything in town. If you do need anything, you're going to have about a 25 minute drive to Boone, which is just northeast of Seven Devils which in Boone, they got a couple medical clinics, a full-blown hospital, and a whole bunch of doctor's offices, and a cancer clinic, all the things you're gonna need. They also get a faded thumbs up for their real estate. They don't have a lot to offer, and actually they don't have anything in Seven Devils, but in the surrounding area, which is kind of the focus of this, it starts off around 300,000 and goes way up. But if you're looking at 300,000 to 450,000, you'll probably find something nice and livable within a few miles of Seven devils and you're going to be up in the hills with some wooded areas and things like that so yeah faded thumbs up just because they don't have a big selection and really nothing in town but if you like to be out doing things this is an outstanding place to live if you're an active senior or you're a digital nomad that owns a mountain bike this is where you want to live Number three, Burnsville, North Carolina. Burnsville sits about 40 miles north of Asheville on some of the most beautiful land this state has to offer. It's not too far from Green Mountain and the Green Mountain Overlook. This is a famous selfie spot. It's a great place to do your Instagram. You could find a lot of rundown villages and towns all in the Appalachian Mountains. Burnsville ain't one of them. They have a population of about 1,674 residents and they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It's actually 64% lower than the national average, which in the past hasn't been that low. I mean, when the country was really dealing with the opioid crisis, this area was kind of hit pretty bad. But Burnsville seems to be doing pretty good. When it comes to internet, they get another thumbs up. They have country cable vision, which offers 400 Mbps to 25% of the town, 200 Mbps to 98% of the town. They also have Spectrum, which offers one gig, and they cover about 99% of the town with that. So like I said, thumbs up. They got choices and they got good speed. When it comes to healthcare, they get a thumbs up for that too. You got Blue Ridge Medical Center, which is in town. They also have Mercy Urgent Care, which is good to have an urgent care in a town. Anything major, you're going to have to head down to Asheville. They have a place I need to eat at someday just because of the name. It's Bubba's Good Eats. You know what else kind of makes this town cool? They got a roller skating rink. You don't see those anymore, but they got one in town. This is another great place for outdoor activities, hiking, whatever you want to do. They got rivers, creeks, everything. Matter of fact, the Cane River flows right by town. 
it's a good place to be outdoors. They also get a thumbs up for their real estate. Now, we're not just talking Burnsville here. The whole area around here, they got a lot to offer and it usually comes with some acres. And it starts off at like 220,000 and goes all the way up into the seven and 800,000. Almost everything you see that's not like in town, Burnsville, is gonna have at least an acre on it. So that's a plus. And almost everything I've looked at has great scenery. I mean, everything not in town. Number two, Bennett, North Carolina. Moving to the other side of the state, we got the small town of Bennett. Bennett only has 268 residents. It's also not too far away from a place called Devil's Tramping Grounds. This is a weird little patch of land in some forest that's supposed to be like haunted and all kinds of weird stuff goes on here. But one thing that they know for sure, nothing grows in this area and they can't figure out why. This is definitely a small town. It's got a fire station, a hardware store, a grill, a post office, a small grocery store a food mart, and they host the Flatwoods Festival every year along with a Christmas parade. Good old-fashioned small-town America. Bennett sits about an hour west of Raleigh, North Carolina, and they get a big thumbs up for their crime rate. It's actually 74% lower than the national average, which is good. Like I've said before, when you have such a small population, they have a couple bar fights in a month. That's going to raise their crime rate through the roof, but this one's 74% lower. When it comes to internet, they only get a faded thumb up because they only have CenturyLink. Now, they say they offer 940 Mbps to about 85% of the town. My experience with CenturyLink, they rarely get up to the speed that they're advertising. So like I said, faded thumbs up for their internet. They also get a faded thumbs up for their healthcare because they got nothing in town. They'd probably get worse, but they're near some of the best healthcare in the country out there in Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill, all that area. But if you do need like a hospital or an emergency room or anything like that, you got Ashboro a little less than 30 minutes to the northwest and they got everything you need from emergency room hospital to family practices to a uh, foot and ankle specialist all kinds of good stuff up there when it comes to real estate they get a thumbs up because it is pretty cheap here now it does get up into the 600 thousands but it's not hard to find someplace that's under 200 thousand in the bennett area now nothing's for sale right now outside of town they got a couple things they're all under 200 thousand and i was looking in just last april and in march there was like four different homes that sold for under 220,000 and they all came with like a half an acre at least. This place doesn't have a terrible amount of things to do. It's not out there in the mountains, like around Asheville and stuff, but it's really inexpensive. It's quiet and they're good people and this is a good place to live. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. We are trying to get that thing to grow. Please go over there, watch some videos, subscribe if you haven't. All right, on to number one. And number one, Davis, North Carolina. Have you ever heard of Davis, North Carolina? Most of you haven't unless you at some point tried to catch a ferry out to Cape Lookout National Seashore. Davis sits on the east coast of North Carolina, about two hours up the coast from Wilmington, North Carolina, and not too far from Moorhead City and Atlantic Beach, North Carolina. This is a great place to live if you want to live at the coast and, you know, have a small town vibe. They don't have that many people living here. Back in 2010, they had 422 people living there. Right now, they have 378. And they get a big thumbs up for their crime rate. Their crime rate is 79% lower than the national average, which is outstanding. They also get a big thumbs up for real estate, even though they don't have a bunch for sale in town right now. Actually, just outside of town, they have one place for sale. But back in April and then earlier this month, they've sold like four different homes. They all go for under 400,000. Now, some of the homes that have sold in previous years or last year do get up in the six and seven hundred thousand area but most of this area is below four hundred thousand which this is a coastal town that's unheard of in most places this is one of those places i always say keep an eye on it because if you're thinking about it something will pop up you grab it grab yourself a mortgage and you own some north carolina coastal real estate when it comes to internet, they get a thumbs up. They don't get up to gig, but you get 300 Mbps from Spectrum here. And they say they cover about 97% of the town. CenturyLink only offers six Mbps, which sucks. And they also offer that to 97% of the town. This is probably a great place to look into Starlink. I mean, you don't have a bunch of mountains, anything like that to get in your way. This might be a great option. Davis gets a faded thumbs up when it comes to healthcare because they don't have anything in town. Anything you need done, I mean, from emergency room to urgent care to pediatric, you're going to have about a 30 minute ride down to Moorhead City. But if you're looking for a nice, quiet place to live on the coast, this is a great option. All right, heading out west again, we find ourselves in Wyoming. Now, 
If you're used to small towns that are like southern small towns, New England small towns, small towns out west, and especially in these states like Wyoming, Montana, Colorado, Utah, they're not as lush and green and have that charming look. There is some beauty to these small towns. They're just a little bit different than people back east think. Let's take a look. Are you looking for a rural town to buy some real estate? Want to get a mortgage and live the American dream in Wyoming? Today we're looking at great rural towns in the cowboy state. Wyoming is a western state that prides itself on its old west frontier history. The land and the people still carry a lot of that old west spirit. It's a very unique place to live. The people are amazing. Wyoming has been a move to hotspot for years. As other western states have cooled down like Colorado, Montana, and Oregon, Wyoming is picking up steam. Real estate in most most of Wyoming is reasonable. Crime isn't a major issue for 99% of the state, and it's beautiful. What's not to love? Like I said in other videos, I normally do top 10 lists, but not all states have 10 good rural towns, and I don't want to waste your time with a bunch of towns that are a bit of a reach just to get to number 10. Wyoming's issues in their small towns are access to healthcare and quality internet, sort of. They don't have the best coverage when it comes to normal internet providers. But Starlink, the one by SpaceX, gets really good reviews in Wyoming. I mean, most of the flatlands of Wyoming, you can get like 200 Mbps. I've watched several reviews on Starlink in Wyoming, read a couple different articles. It seemed to be doing pretty good there. But healthcare and internet somewhat do knock a lot of really good small towns off this list. And and if you're about to comment, stop typing. Most people do need internet. We know you like the outdoors and you like reading books. Congratulations, you're better than all of us. We should strive to be more like you. The focus of this series is rural towns. That normally implies a good distance outside any major metro areas. Wyoming really doesn't have any major metro areas. With the towns in this video, we're looking for that sweet spot, a decent place to live that isn't too close to any major cities. It's easy on the crime rate, not five hours away from a hospital, or so far out in the sticks you get horrible internet. Got it? Get it? Good. Let's take a look. Number six. Du Bois, Wyoming. Du Bois, Wyoming is in western Wyoming, not too far from Yellowstone and the Grand Tetons. It is also really close to complete peace and quiet. Honestly, this place is out there. It's like the perfect place to live if you're dodging subpoenas or something like that. It is called Du Bois, and if you're looking at it and you're thinking, no, that's Du Bois, it's Du Bois here. It might be Du Bois everywhere else in the world, it's Du Bois here. Du Bois sits about three hours west of Casper, Wyoming, and about an hour and a half east of Jackson, Wyoming. But Cassidy, actually Robert Leroy Parker, the Old West guy, he owned and managed a ranch on the outskirts of Du Bois beginning somewhere around 1890. This is a great place to go fishing. They've got a lot of creeks, river goes right by town. This is a great place to live for the outdoor types that want some peace and quiet. You won't get peace and quiet on the west side of town though, there's a gun range there right by the river. Every place else seems pretty solid when it comes to peace and quiet. They only have 800 residents living in Du Bois and they get a thumbs up when it comes to crime rate. Their crime rate is actually 17% lower than the national average, which is kind of high for most of Wyoming, but it's a great place to live so they go on the list. When it comes to healthcare, they get a faded thumbs up. In town, they only have a place called the Du Bois Medical Clinic. It's a small clinic with some doctors and stuff, and I'm sure they do great work. It's just not a full-blown hospital if you need specialists or stuff like that, or an emergency room for that matter. For that kind of action, you got to head all the way out to Jackson, which is about an hour and a half away. That's why they get the faded thumbs up. In most states, being an hour and a half away from a full-blown hospital is a really bad thing. In Wyoming, that's kind of par for course. When it comes to internet, they're getting a thumbs up because... They have Range Telephone Cooperative that offers one gig for 84% of the town. So that's solid. And like I said at the beginning, Starlink seems to be a really good option for Wyoming. As far as property goes, I'm going to give them a faded thumbs up. And there's a couple reasons for that. Things aren't available all the time. And when they do, they're a little expensive. But there's a caveat to that. Almost anything you buy in Wyoming is going to come with at least an acre. Unless you're like downtown Casper or Cheyenne, most any piece of property you buy, any real estate will come with some acreage. So it's going to be a little expensive. Right now, they have a couple places on the outskirts of town. One is going for $700,000. That comes with about five acres. And one's going for $550,000. That comes with two and a half acres. Both of those pieces of property are right on the river too. So it's expensive, but it's worth it. 
Number five, Lovell, Wyoming. Lovell is the largest town in Bighorn County, Wyoming, which is in the northern section of the Cowboy State, not too far from Bighorn Lake and the Montana border. This is another great place if you like fishing, outdoors, hiking, I don't know, mountain biking. Not too terribly far from the Bighorn National Forest and Bighorn Canyon National Recreation Center. This is a great place to live if you want to be outdoors. Fresh air, nice river not too far from town, and it only has a population of about 23 hundred residents. Now they get a big thumbs up here for their crime rate. It's actually 58% lower than the national average, which is outstanding. When it comes to internet, they get a faded thumbs up in Lovell. They have a company called TCT, which offers 75 Mbps and that's DSL. They cover about 98.9% .9 of the town, so that's good. It's just not the fastest internet you're going to get. Again, Starlink might be a great option here. Lovell gets a thumbs up for their healthcare. They do have a hospital in town. It's North Bighorn Hospital. It's got a clinic and a couple other things there. Anything major, you're probably going to have to head out to like Billings, Montana, which is about an hour and a half north of Lovell. Lovell gets a big thumbs up when it comes to real estate. Right now, they have two places in town, one going for $258,000, the other one going for $150,000. They're both livable, probably not going to need a bunch of work. They're just a little bit older, but they're nice. Looking back over the last few months, it seems like everything that sells in town usually goes for around $300,000 or less. That's solid. Get outside of town a little bit and it starts getting a little more expensive and you get some acreage. So like I said, they get a big thumbs up for real estate. All in all, Lovell's not a bad place to live. Number four, Sundance, Wyoming. It already sounds like a cool place to live. Sundance, Wyoming. This town sits near the North Dakota border and the Black Hills National Forest. Now, before we go on, how many of you were typing out the message to tell me it's near South Dakota, not North Dakota? Be honest, who was leaving the comment? There's a lot of people, once they see a mistake, they just put the whole video on pause while they angrily type out some kind of message. Anyway, it's near South Dakota and the Black Hills and about 30 minutes southeast of Devil's Tower. Wyoming. This town isn't named after a person, it's actually named after the sun dance ceremony practiced by several American Indian tribes or Native American Indian tribe, or indigenous people, whatever you want to call it. Sundance has a population of about a thousand residents, a little bit over 1,032, and they get a big thumbs up for their crime rate. It's 71% lower than the national average, which is outstanding. That's what I love about Wyoming. There is not much crime, and a lot of people might say it's because everyone's packing. Maybe. It also has a lot to do with the people are just decent. And these decent people get a thumbs up for their internet too. 72% of the town is covered by rain telephone cooperative and they offer one gig when it comes to healthcare, they get a big thumbs up too they got everything they got an emergency room at crook county hospital they also have crook county hospital nursing home they have crook county hospital long-term care north wyoming mental health and they also got a high school which always comes with a nurse uh funny story years uh, i've been graduated high school for like 30 something years but uh there was an accident right in front of our um high school one time and the high school nurse ran out there basically saved a dude's life <laughs> I was like, that's good. But this is another great town to live if you love the outdoors. I mean, hiking, fishing, camping, mountain biking, snowmobiling in the winter is big in this part of the country too. Kind of hard to do it during the summer. When it comes to real estate, they get a big thumbs up because they got something for everyone. Right now, they got a house that's for sale outside of town for $149,000 that really needs some work. Your starting money, what you're going to need to buy a house or what you're looking at spending is going to be about $300,000. Currently, they have a couple homes for $328,000 as one and the other one's $305,000. But they go up and you start getting acreage and normally I would say something with a couple acres is going to run you somewhere around $600,000, $700,000. And they have places in town that look really nice. Last six months or so, they've sold like seven other homes that are around 300 to 400,000. So something for every price range here. Number three, Saratoga, Wyoming. This is a great one, especially if you like the outdoors and you like golf. Great place for that. They have a golf course. They have plenty to do outdoors. The North Platte River runs right through town and the golf course. They've even got a hot springs. Now, I brought this up in a recent video. If you're getting up there in age, you got some arthritis, there's a lot of people in that situation that swear by hot springs. But they have the Saratoga Hobo Hot Springs on the south side of town, right near the North Platte River. Saratoga has a little over 1,800 residents, and they get a big thumbs up for their crime rate. It's actually 72% lower than the national average. Again, it's... 
you know, great people and a lot of guns really keep your crime rate down. That's just fact. They get a thumbs up for their health care. They have a couple clinics in town, a dental office, pharmacy, things like that. But if you need a real full-blown hospital, it's only like 35, 40 minutes away. You got Memorial Hospital of Carbon County up there in Rawlins. So like I said, they get a thumbs up. I think they need like an urgent care. I couldn't find one. Uh, if I'm missing something, let me know. If you visit Saratoga, make sure in the morning you go to Sweet Marie's, get some coffee, maybe some cupcakes, something like that. It's a nice place to start your morning. Now I mentioned they have some hot springs in town. They have another place called Saratoga Hot Springs Resort, which is really cool. They got like teepees over these pools and it's a pretty cool thing to have in town, especially if you got arthritis, things like that. When it comes to real estate, they get a thumbs up here too, because this is a great place to live and the real estate isn't terrible. I mean, it starts off around $260,000 that's in town and it goes up. There's a couple for like 500,000, one for 375. Outside of town, you start getting up there a little bit higher in the 700,000s and you get some acreage with it. So like I said, thumbs up for that. Number two, Hannah, Wyoming. About 40 minutes north of Saratoga, Wyoming, you have Hannah, Wyoming. This is a town that starts getting out there in the sticks a little bit. And this one goes on here for those of you that are on a budget when you retire or you're just in a budget in general and want to live in Wyoming. This is a great place to look at. Hannah, Wyoming only has about 800 residents and they get a big thumbs up for their crime rate. It's actually 92% lower than the national average, which is outstanding. There are no jobs out here, so don't move out here thinking you're going to be able to find a job. This is a great place for retirees or people that work from home. They got decent internet. They get a thumbs up for their internet. They get Union Wireless. That gets them up to one gig. It's DSL and it covers 95% of the town. After that, you got Starlink. It is definitely doable in this part of Wyoming. Hannah is a great place for someone that wants to live out in the prairie, I guess you could say. They don't want to be around people. They're not looking for a nightlife. They're not looking for friends that have all their teeth things like that. This is the type of place where big excitement is normally like if the train breaks down in town. Hannah gets a faded thumbs up for healthcare. Now they do have a family practice in town, which is nice. This is a very small town and it's good that they have something like that here. Anything you need past what they can offer you, you're going to be going down to Rollins, which is about 40 minutes to the west of Hannah. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. We'd love it if you went over there, watched some videos, and hit that like button on some of those videos. And matter of fact, hit the like button on this video. Really helps the channel out. All right, on to number one. And number one. Afton, Wyoming. Afton is a town in Lincoln County, Wyoming that sits near the Idaho border about an hour and a half south of Jackson, Wyoming. It has a population of almost 2,000 residents and it's home to the world's largest arc made of elk antlers. Yes, if you're an elk antler enthusiast, this is your town. It's also good if you like fresh air because their air quality is outstanding. But this elk arc spans 75 feet across four lanes of US Highway 89. The arc consists of 3,011 elk antlers weighing about 15 tons. Right now, you're going, that is more information than I will ever need about elk antler arches. The good news is, all your elk arch needs are now in place and you could sleep better tonight. This is a great place to live for so many other reasons besides elk antlers. They get a big thumbs up for their crime rate. It's actually 94% lower than the national average. Their violent crime rate is 97% lower than the national average. Good job, Afton. They also get a thumbs up for their health care. They have Star Valley Health, which is open 24 hours a day, has the emergency room and all that good stuff you need. Anything past what they can offer, you're gonna have to head up to Jackson, which like I said, is almost an hour and a half away. When it comes to real estate, it's getting a faded thumbs up because it's pretty freaking expensive here. Like I said, just that price comes with some property. So if you're looking for some property and you know, you can spend at least 700,000, this is a great place to live. Now in town, they have a couple places that are for 400,000, but a majority of the places are going to be 500,000 on up and you're going to get some acreage with it. When it comes to internet, they get a big thumbs up. They've got a company called Silver Star, which I don't know much about them, but they say they cover 99 9.6% of the town and they offer one gig and that's fiber. So it's going to be pretty good. Again, like I've been saying, Starlink is a serious consideration here in Wyoming. seems like it's pretty decent from everything I've seen. All right, heading right next door, we find ourselves in Idaho, one of the most popular states these days for people to move to. Let's take a look.
Looking to escape the city? Want to find a nice rural town to get a mortgage, buy a house, and breathe some fresh air? What Californian doesn't want to, right? Today we're looking at great rural towns in Idaho, Californian's favorite landing spot. In the other videos, I explain that not all states have 10 good rural towns, and I don't want to waste your time with some towns that are real reach just to get us up to 10. The Gem State has a whole bunch of great rural towns. Sadly, most of them are just too far away from healthcare. That's important especially since we're kind of gearing this towards two demographics, retirees and remote workers. Retirees need health care. So that knocked a whole bunch off this list. Idaho, we're left with five that are in that sweet spot. Get it? Got it? Good. Let's take a look. Number five, Island Park, Idaho. Island Park is in eastern Idaho, not too far away from the Montana border and right near Yellowstone National Park. That alone should pique some interest in living here. If you like fishing in the outdoors, this is a great place to live, especially if you're into fishing. You got a reservoir, creeks, rivers all over the place around here. The area can get cold, so keep that in mind. I just read that they have a winter weather advisory right now in the beginning of May. Shouldn't we be getting ready for summer? They don't have a lot of people living here. Technically, they only have about 280 residents, but in the outlying areas, this little section of Idaho, there's a little bit more, but technically 280 residents. If you move here and you're from California, keep that to yourself. If anyone asks, tell them, I don't know, you move from the Ottoman Empire. They'll accept that more than a Californian. Their crime rate is 57% lower than the national average, which is outstanding. So they get a big thumbs up for that. When it comes to internet, they have Blackfoot Communications, which offers 100 Mbps, and that covers about 86% of the town. So that's solid. They also have Fibercom, which offers one gig. They only cover about 50% of the town, but you have some choices. So they get a thumbs up for internet too, which I find find amazing because they are kind of out here in the sticks. Now, when it comes to healthcare, uh, you know, they're not the best. They're going to get a faded thumbs up for this. They have a medical clinic, which I'm sure does amazing work, but they're just a little limited in their size. So you're probably going to have to head down to Rexburg, Idaho, which is about an hour away. They got Madison Memorial Hospital there and all that good stuff. They also have an urgent care down there, Fall River Family Medical Urgent Care, whatever. Anything past that, another 20 minutes or so, you got Idaho Falls right down the road. So like I said, faded thumbs up for that. Still, Island Park is a great place to live. When it comes to real estate, Island Park gets a thumbs up because they got a lot to choose from. If you go in town and stuff, you're looking at anywhere from $250,000 to $350,000. When you start getting to the outskirts, it goes up in price, but you're usually getting some acreage with it. And it's like a really cool cabin type thing. And those usually start around $600,000, go all the way up to like $1.5 million. So yeah, thumbs up for that one. Just because of the variety, they got something for every price range, it seems like. Number four, Salmon, Idaho. Salmon sits on the Salmon River about two and a half hours north of Idaho Falls and about two days away from any real traffic. This place is a bit out of the way and that makes for a great rural town. Again, if fishing's your thing, pack up a U-Haul and all your gear and head to Salmon. You won't be disappointed. Surprisingly, they have a good sized medical center here. It's called Steel Memorial Medical Center and, you know, 24 hour ER, all that good stuff, which is surprising because this place is out of the way. So they get a thumbs up for that. Anything else past what they can do, you're going to have to go down to Idaho Falls. And that's like I said, two and a half hours away. But their medical center should be able to cover most anything. One blogger wrote, Salmon is where you start your adventures in central Idaho. I mean, with the Salmon River right there, you got great fishing and rafting. It's all there for you. This rural town has about 3,000 residents and a crime rate that's 52% lower than the national average. That is outstanding. So they get a big thumbs up for that. When it comes to internet, they have Custer Telephone Broadband Service, which offers one gig to about 67% of the town. And if you're not one of those lucky 67%, you got CenturyLink at 100 Mbps, which covers 98% of the town. So not bad at all. They get a thumbs up for their internet. Salmon is one of the more beautiful towns you will find in this part of Idaho. Actually, all of Idaho. When it comes to the real estate in Salmon, it's not that bad. I mean, they've got some older homes that probably need a little work for 220, 250,000. Right now their lowest is actually 260,000, three bedroom, one bath. Not the greatest thing, but it's doable. After that, you start getting into the 500 and 600,000 area. Right now, they also have one for 1.4 million, but that one's a cabin. It's like a ranch thing, and it comes with 10 acres. So they get a thumbs up for that one because they have a lot to offer. And in most cases, it's not crazy expensive. 
Number three, St. Anthony, Idaho. St. Anthony sits about 35 to 45 minutes north of Idaho Falls on the Henry's Fork of the Snake River. Before St. Anthony was a town, it was Fort Henry. Major Andrew Henry established a short-lived fort a few miles west of where the town stands today. It was built around 1809, and they really never got much use out of it because it was finally closed down in fall of 1811. But Major Henry left a mark on the area. He did a lot of exploring here and stuff like that and got the Henry's Fork of the Snake River named after him. The name St. Anthony for the town, there's a little bit of a dispute on what it's named for. Some people think it was named after St. Anthony Falls in Minnesota, where a lot of the pioneers came from and others claim that Mormon pioneers actually named the place. Either way, about 3,500 residents like this place and they should. They've got a crime rate that's 87% lower than the national average. So they get a big thumbs up for that one. You don't find much crime in a lot of places in Idaho and this is a perfect example. When it comes to internet, they're going to get a thumbs up because they got a lot of choices. The choices don't cover the whole town, but this is what they got. Blackfoot Communication offers 100 Mbps and that covers about 73% of the town. Anthem Broadband only gives you 25 Mbps, but that covers about 99% of the town. They got another one called Sparklight, which covers 60% of the town. They offer one gig and Fibercon again offers one gig, but they only cover about 55% of the town. They also have one called Direct Communications, which only covers 2% of the town and they offer one gig. So they get a thumbs up because they got a lot of options. When it comes to healthcare, they got a few clinics and a few doctors here, so that's okay. Anything major, you're going to have to go down to Idaho Falls like 35 45 minutes away so they get a thumbs up for that could be better if they had like a urgent care or something in town. I couldn't find anything like that. Now, what I don't like about St. Anthony is it's a nice looking downtown if they could put some effort into it. They got a lot of old, nice brick buildings that are just waiting for someone to put a little effort into them. So their downtown isn't the best, but it's inexpensive, it's safe, and there's a lot of good things to do outdoors here. A lot of fishing, things of that nature. When it comes to real estate in St. Anthony, they get a thumbs up because they're not crazy expensive. They'd probably get a bigger thumbs up, but right now they only have one lot for sale and it's going for about $225,000. So it's three bedroom, one bath, nothing spectacular, but that's a good price. In the last few months, last six months, they've sold some homes, about four or five, for around the same price. So it's one of those places, if this is where you want to move to, keep an eye on the real estate market there. Number two, Idaho City, Idaho. Idaho City sits about an hour northwest of Boise, Idaho. And this is an old gold rush town that really hasn't lost that whole gold rush, wild west type theme. I mean, they've taken a serious anti-sidewalk position. This is a rural town. It was founded in 1862 during the Boise Basin Gold Rush. This mountain town was originally called Bannock and thousands of prospectors came here hoping to strike it rich. Bannock was one of the largest settlements in the Pacific Northwest back in the day. And in case you don't know, some regional maps consider Idaho part of the Pacific Northwest with Washington and Oregon. This is a small town that only has 474 people. It's not a lot of people, but they do enjoy a crime rate that's 34% lower than the national average. That's one positive about having a small population. Not a lot of people do a lot of stupid stuff. Now, here's another thing. That crime rate is outstanding because when you got that few of people, it goes by per capita. And I mean, if someone breaks into a car, that's going to raise their crime rate through the roof. So 34% below the national average, they get a big thumbs up for that one. When it comes to the internet, they got CenturyLink and Century. Link offers them just under a gig and they cover 90% of the town. So that's good. Everything else, if you're outside of the town, good luck getting internet. So they're getting a faded thumbs up for that one. When it comes to healthcare, they get a faded thumbs up too, because in town, they only have like a small health clinic and an ambulance service. So anything you need is going to be done in Boise and that's about an hour away. So that's why they get a faded thumbs up for that one. Again, like I always say, I'm sure the people at Basin Community Health Center are doing the best they can with what they got. And I'm sure the ambulance guys are great, but yeah, they're just a small town. So there's no real uh, chance they're going to have like a ER or a surgery center or something like that. But they do have a bunch of creeks and a uh, hot springs right there in town. So you can go do that. Believe it or not, some people do move to areas that have hot springs because like arthritis and stuff. A lot of people feel that really helps. And as you get older, that might fit the bill for what you're looking for. 
When it comes to real estate in Idaho City, they get a, a faded thumbs up because like so many other places in Idaho, property is expensive. Right now, the lowest thing they have is $499,000. The highest thing they have is $725,000. So it gets pricey, but the coolest thing about Idaho is normally it comes with great scenery and probably an acre or so. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There's a link down below. We'd love it if you went over there and subscribed. Also, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. All right, on to number one. And number one, Driggs, Idaho. Driggs, Idaho sits a little over an hour east of Idaho Falls, Idaho, at about 45 minutes northwest of Jackson, Wyoming. It's right there on the border in what is known as the Teton Valley. It's also known as the quiet side of the Tetons. This side of the Tetons, yeah, it's not visited that much. I mean, it is, but nothing compared to the other side. One cool thing about this place, they do have a golf course not too far away. It's just over the border in Wyoming, but they actually have a golf course. Not many of the small towns in Idaho can can say that. Driggs only has a population of about 1,800 residents and they have a crime rate that's 84% lower than the national average. That is outstanding. 84%. It's like nobody told these people you could actually break into homes and cars and beat people up and you know things like that. It's like they don't even know that's an option here. One other cool thing, there's a uh, housing area or whatever called Tributary. They have their own golf course. So there's a private golf course in town. That's a plus. I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but I imagine you have to to live in that area to be able to play the golf course or they have some restrictions on outsiders coming in. That's how private courses usually are. That's how they are in California, at least. When it comes to real estate, they get a faded thumbs up because it's an expensive place to buy a home here. The homes that are for sale right now, the lowest one is $699,000. They have a bunch of million dollar homes here. But if you could afford it, this is a great place to live. They even have a good size hospital, a dermatologist, orthodontist, pharmacies, all that good stuff that you'd expect in a much bigger city. They got it right here. So they get a big thumbs up for that. When it comes to internet, they're doing great. They have a company called Silver Star that offers one gig to 98.4% of the town. And that's outstanding. So they get a big thumbs up for that one too. The only thing, the cost of housing here is kind of rough. That's their biggest negative, I would say. But if you can afford it, this is an outstanding place to live. Might as well go right next door to another Pacific Northwest state, Washington. Today we're looking at great rural towns in Washington state. A few things about rural Washington towns. They rarely have jobs, so you have to bring one or not need one, like most states. A lot of mountain towns are a good distance from any form of health care in Washington state, and the weather can be challenging to say the least. The good news about Washington is there's no state income tax and they have the cheapest utility bills on average in the country, natural gas, water, and especially electricity. And that's from a study that was done in July of 2021. If you haven't watched this series before, what we're doing here is we're looking for that sweet spot, a town that's a decent place to live that isn't too close to any major city, it's easy on the crime rate, it's not five hours away from a hospital, or so far out in the sticks that your internet is barely a step up from carrier pigeons. And to be honest, the internet and the healthcare knocked a lot of really nice rural towns off this list. Like I explained in all the other videos of this series, not every state has 10 good rural towns, and I don't want to waste your time with some places that are a bit of a reach just to make it up to 10. Get it? Got it? Good. Let's take a look. Number six, Tenasket, Washington. Tenasket is a rural Washington town on the Okanagan River. It's about three hours northwest of Spokane and about four and a half hours northeast of Seattle. It looks closer on the map, but it's in the mountains and there's no four lane straight highways most of the way. You're going to spend a lot of that trip on winding mountain roads. This is a great place for anyone that likes to do things outdoors. They got the river right there through town, which has fishing. I was watching a guy pull out a bunch of northern pike right there in the river. It's also right next to some great hunting areas, if that's your thing. And they only have a population of 1,000 residents, a little bit over. It's like 1,032. That's the estimate in 2021. And they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. Their crime rate is 32% lower than the national average, which is pretty good. They also get a thumbs up when it comes to healthcare for a couple reasons. One, they have a North Valley hospital in town, which has an emergency room and all that good stuff, which is, you know, when you're out this far in the sticks, you kind of need an emergency room sometimes. And they're really not too far away from the Canadian border in case you have some really expensive medication you got to drive up there to pick up. 
That's becoming less and less a thing since a lot of medications now you can have sent from Canada. So that's pretty cool. But if you do need to go up there, British Columbia is like 32 minutes to your north. When it comes to internet, I'm going to give them a faded thumbs up. And that's because they have Spectrum, which offers one gig, and they say they only offer it to 40% of the town. They also have Ziply Fiber, which is DSL. That only gets you 100 Mbps, and they only cover about 50% of the town. They have one other company in the area called Okanagan PUD or PUD, whatever they want to call it. They say they offer 100 Mbps. They also offer it to 42% of the town. When it comes to real estate, they get a thumbs up as well because they have some variety. It starts off around 400,000. That's a decent house and goes up to about 900 something thousand. That usually comes with a couple acres and you're pretty close to the river in most scenarios. Right now, they only have three places for sale, but in the last few months, they've sold like four others, and that's their range. From 400,000 for something decent, nice, and livable, all the way up to 900,000, and maybe even over a million. But Tenasket is out in the sticks, and if that's what you're looking for, this is a great place to live. Number five, Dayton, Washington. Tucked away in the rolling hills of southeast Washington, you have the rural town of Dayton. Dayton sits on the Tushy River, about 40 minutes east of Walla Walla and about an hour from Kennewick, Washington. If you like fishing, wine, and golf, this is a good place to take a look at, honestly. You can fish on the Tushy River, which flows right through town. They have a nine-hole golf course called the Tushy Valley Golf Course, which is on the west side of town. And most of the wine is going to be down towards Walla Walla. But this whole area of southeastern Washington and northeastern Oregon just has tons of wineries around that area. About 2,400 people call Dayton home. And they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It's actually 32% lower than the national average, just like the last one on this list. When it comes to healthcare, they get another thumbs up. They got Dayton General Hospital here, which has an ER and all the good stuff you need. Anything they can't offer you, I'm sure you could find in Walla Walla or Kennewick. When it comes to internet, they get a faded thumbs up, sadly. They got one gig from Spectrum, but it's only offered to about 5% of the town. CenturyLink offers 100 Mbps to about 90% of the town, and they have a couple other companies like Tushi Valley Television, which offers 100 Mbps, and that apparently goes to 100% of the town. They get a big thumbs up when it comes to real estate because they have a big selection and uh, it's not expensive. I mean, it's not expensive for Washington State. Washington tends to be a little expensive when it comes to real estate. They're not doing terrible here. They have one house right now that looks decent going for $289,000. But most places you're going to be want to looking at three seventy-five dollars to $425,000. We'll get you something really nice. You go outside of town, you can start getting some acreage and that starts off around $800,000, works its way up. I've driven through Dayton a few times. It's a cute little place. I mean, it's been a few years, but small towns rarely change that much in, you know, four or five years. But it's a nice little place to live, it looks like. Number four, Gold Bar, Washington. That's right, it's called Gold Bar. Gold Bar is a great rural town not too far outside the Seattle metro area on the Skykomish River. This is a great place to fish for steelhead and salmon. There's a ton of videos on YouTube about it. I got sucked down that YouTube rabbit hole watching a bunch of them. Gold Bar sits about 50 minutes outside of Everett, Washington, and a little over an hour northeast of Seattle. I like this one. It's far enough away from the city, but not too far if you have to go in. You're not looking at an all-day trip. They only have about 2,000 people living here, and they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It's actually 41% lower than the national average, which is outstanding. When it comes to healthcare, they get a, you know, a faded thumbs up because there's nothing really in town. You got to go out to Monroe, about 40 minutes away with a full-blown hospital there. Anything they can't handle, Everett or Seattle, I'm sure can take care of everything. As far as internet goes in Gold Bar, you have Xfinity in 92% of the town offering 1.2 gigs. That's pretty good. They also have Ziply Fibers, DSL. They offer a little over 100 Mbps to about 95% of the town. So you got some options and they're pretty good. Gold Bar gets a thumbs up for their real estate. Now keep in mind, it's Washington, so it's going to be a little more expensive than most states. And you're not too far outside the Seattle metro area, so that adds a little extra price onto it. Right now, they have one place for sale that looks nice. It's a little bit small. It's in town. It's going for $525,000. In the last few months, they've sold some that start off around four hundred dollars and work their way up. I would say you're looking at four hundred dollars to five fifty dollars if you want to buy a nice house in Gold Bar. Outside of town, you get some acreage, and they start off around $700,000 and work their way up. This is not a bad place to retire or work from home, especially if you have a job in Seattle that you might have to go in for meetings every once in a while, this is a perfect place for the remote worker. 
But if you got the money and don't mind some cold weather and rainy weather, Gold Bar's a great option. Number three, Morton, Washington. Morton, Washington sits about 90 minutes south of Tacoma on the Tilton River. Morton has a great logging history and it's still an ongoing industry in this area and it plays a big part of the local economy. This is a great part of Washington where you got mountains, woods, creeks everywhere along with the river and they also have a lake nearby. Morton has about 1,100 residents as of 2021 and they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. Again, another place with a 32% below the national average crime rate, which is great. Morton also gets a big thumbs up when it comes to health care. They have the Arbor Healthcare Morton Hospital in town, emergency room, the whole bit. We've seen this a few times in this series where you have a really big hospital for such a small town. Usually it's kind of covering the whole county. Well, Morton has theirs right in town, so that's a plus. When it comes to real estate, they get a big thumbs up there too. They have two homes right now for sale that don't look bad. They actually look really nice. One's going for $425,000, one's going for $440,000. I look back at what sold earlier this year, and it seems to be right around the $400,000 area is where you're going to start finding nice homes to live in. They do have other real estate outside of town that gets a little pricey up into the eight and nine hundred thousands, but in town you're looking a little over four hundred thousand to five hundred thousand. Morton also gets a big thumbs up when it comes to their internet. Now they got CenturyLink offering 100 Mbps, and that covers about 96 percent of the town. They also have another company that I've heard about. It's called Astound Broadband, and they offer one gig cable internet to about 86% of the town. They also offer fiber one gig. I don't know why you need fiber if you got cable at one gig, but they offer fiber only to about 10% of the town. So yeah, they got you covered when it comes to internet as well. Morton isn't too far north of Mount St. Helens. And if you've never seen this, it's amazing. And if you're ever in the area, I would suggest going to their little visitor thing and check out Mount St. Helens. It's just an awesome thing to see. Number two, Twisp, Washington. Twist Washington is a really cool place. It's like this eccentric artist community, somewhat. I mean, they got normal things. It's not just a bunch of hippies making beaded necklaces and tie-dye shirts. This is a cool place to hang out, especially on the weekends. You don't have to live here. You can go visit Twisp. Twisp is a town in north central Washington, which sits at the confluence of the Twisps and Methow Rivers, about three hours east of Bellingham, Washington. Highway 20 goes right through town, and in my opinion, it's one of the most scenic drives you could take. It's right along the Cascade Mountains. It's amazing. Twisp is a quiet little town of only about 1,000 residents, but they get a big thumbs up for their crime rate. It's actually 56% lower than the national average, which is outstanding. This is also a great place to live if you're not into that much rain. They do get rain, don't get me wrong, but compared to Seattle and the west side of the Cascades, this is pretty good. Now they do get cold and they do get some snow, but it's not raining every single day like it seems it is in Seattle. This is a great community. Now, reluctantly, I got to give them a faded thumbs up when it comes to healthcare. In town, they got like maybe a family practice, doctor's office, stuff like that, but they don't have anything like a real big clinic or a hospital or anything like that. If you need a hospital, you got about a 45 minute drive to the east to OMAC where you'll find the Mid Valley Hospital. Not saying that anyone in Twist is doing bad work when it comes to healthcare. It's just they don't have anything big there. You got to drive anything major. You got a long drive. They also get a faded thumbs up when it comes to their internet. It's not the best. They got that Okanagan PUD or PUD, whatever they call it. And they offer 100 Mbps for about 68% of the town. They also have CenturyLink offering 100 Mbps to about 92% of the town. Nothing there is over 100 Mbps, so that kind of sucks. If you're looking for real estate here, it's uh, you know, a little all over the map, but one thing I do like, it starts off around 450,000 and goes on up. But if you're willing to spend about 700, 800, 900,000 dollars, you can get some amazing places with acres and just an incredible log cabin type thing on them or just a normal house. But they get some pretty good real estate. Right now they have a few places for sale that start off around 400,000, work their way up to about 700,000. Uh, in the last few months, they've sold some really, really nice places that have some acres and stuff. It's it's a great place to buy land. It's a beautiful place and there's a ton of stuff to do. You got Lake Chelan not too far away either, which is easily one of my favorite lakes in the country. When you factor that in, the scenery around here and the rivers that flow right through town, not a bad place to live. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget, we have another channel called On This Day. There is a link down below. And if you don't know, that's basically we do five days a week videos about things that have happened on that specific date through history. Love it if you went over and checked it out. All right, on to number one. 
And number one, Colville, Washington. Colville is a northeast Washington town not too far from the Canadian and Idaho borders, with the Colville River flowing just west of downtown. John Work, an agent for the Hudson Bay Company, established Fort Coville near Kettle Falls Fur Trading Site in 1825. This place has been around a while. Coville's almost too big for this list. I usually try and keep it under 5,000 or so, and they've got 4,800 residents living here. But it's still very rural. It's far away from pretty much everything. It's an hour and a half north of Spokane. That's the nearest big city to them. And they got a lot of homes on the outskirts of town and in the hills around it. But this is a great place to live, especially when you consider their crime rate. They get a big thumbs up for their crime rate. It's actually 97% lower than the national average, which is amazing. They also got good health care here. They got Providence Mount Carmel Hospital, which has the ER and everything you're going to need. If you can't, like I said, Spokane's just an hour and a half to the south. Coville is great for a lot of different reasons. I mean, if you like golf, they got golf courses here. They got all kinds of outdoor stuff to do. Clean air, a gun club and pretty good real estate prices, especially for Washington State. I mean, right now they only have a couple places for sale in town that are below 600,000. They got one that's like 210,000, a couple that are in the 300,000 area, and then some that are in the 400,000 area. Looking at what they've sold in the last few months, it doesn't look like it's uncommon to find homes here for under 300,000 that are decent and livable. Prices are going up, so we'll see how that pans out. But a couple months ago, in, in April and March, they had sold some homes for under 300000 But they have some amazing homes that have been sold and some for sale right now that are on the outskirts of town for over $600,000 that come with some acreage. So they definitely get a thumbs up when it comes to the real estate just because they got a big variety and it's usually really nice looking homes. When it comes to internet, they get a thumbs up there too. They've got Spectrum offering one gig to a little over 50% of the town. They also have CenturyLink Fiber in about 80% of the town also offering almost a gig. It says 940 Mbps. That is not bad for a place that's this far out in the sticks. Granted, it's a good sized town, but it's a little far away from most places. You'd think they wouldn't have the best internet, but they do, they're doing pretty good. All right, heading out to my second favorite state in the country, which is Pennsylvania. This one includes my favorite small town in the United States, Honesdale, Pennsylvania. Let's take a look. Are you sick of living in the city? Want to find a rural town, get a mortgage in Pennsylvania, and get in on that life and death debate? Which is better, Sheets or Wawa? Who doesn't, right? Today we're looking at great rural towns in the Quaker state, Pennsylvania. It's also known as the Cornerstone State. Pennsylvania is one of my favorite states. As a matter of fact, what I consider to be one of the best small towns in the U.S. is in Pennsylvania. And yes, it is on this list. There are a ton of great rural towns in Pennsylvania, but hardly any had all the things we look for in these videos. So many didn't make the list because of crime, poor internet, or they were just clumped together with a few other small towns and sort of making them a city and not really a rural town. I promise I missed some really good ones on this list, and if you know some that I overlooked, we'd love to hear about it in the comment section. If you haven't watched these videos before, what we're looking for is that sweet spot. A decent place to live, isn't too close to a major city, easy on the crime rate, not five hours away from a hospital, and not so far out in the sticks, you can't get good internet. In the past videos, I explained that not all states have good rural towns, and I don't want to waste your time throwing a bunch in there that don't really cut the mustard, just to get to 10. Got it? Get it? Good. Let's take a look. Number 6. Honesdale, Pennsylvania Honesdale is one of my favorite small towns in the country. Honesdale is a rural small town in northeast Pennsylvania, not too far from the New York border. And I've spent a lot of time in this place, and I love Honesdale. They've got great people, a great vibe, and one of the coolest hotels I've ever stayed in, Hotel Wayne. You could actually see that one on some of those ghost-busting YouTube channels, you know, the ghost hunter type things. They've had a couple episodes done on Hotel Wayne. This is a historic hotel in a historic town. The Lackawaxen River flows straight through Honesdale with creeks and lakes surrounding this place. If you like fishing, hunting, all that good stuff, Honesdale is perfect for that. They got about 4,000 residents here and they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It's 34% lower than the national average. They also get a thumbs up for their internet. They have Blue Ridge, which offers one gig to 80% of the town. They have like four other companies that offer one gig and they cover anywhere from from 10 to 40% of the town. If you got any healthcare issues, they got you covered in Honesdale. They have Wayne Memorial Hospital in town. This place is huge. It's one of those situations where it seems too big for the town, but it covers a lot of the county. 
They've got an emergency room, everything you need. Pretty big for such a small town. It's not some small clinic with a couple doctors. Full-blown hospital. When it comes to real estate, Honesdale gets a big thumbs up too. They got plenty to choose from and they got a wide selection of prices. Starting off at $155,000 right now, that one's going to need a lot of work. But you could get something decent for $220,000 to $270,000. If you really want something nice, you're looking at about $350,000 to $400,000. And unless it's like right downtown Honesdale, chances are you're going to have a creek or a pond on your property. If you do go there looking for property, call Tim at uh, the Remax in Honesdale, Honesdale Remax. His family's been there a long time. Number five, Emporium, Pennsylvania. Emporium sits about three hours northeast of Pittsburgh in northern Pennsylvania, right where a whole bunch of creeks meet. There's like four or five good sized creeks or streams that meet at this town. That's one thing you notice right away when you visit Pennsylvania. There is water everywhere. Ponds, creeks, rivers, streams, lakes, springs. They always seem to be a short walk away from wherever you are in this state. Emporium has a population of about 2,000 and they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It's 55% lower than the national average, which is pretty good. When it comes to their internet, they also get a thumbs up. They have Windstream offering one gig to 99% of the town. If you take a look at the healthcare here, we're going to give them a faded thumbs up. They have a few doctors and some clinics in town along with a dentist, but anything major or an emergency room, you got about a 30 minute drive to St. Mary's. When you look at their real estate, they're doing pretty good. They get a thumbs up there too. 100,000 will get you a home or actually under 100,000. There's a couple for like 80,000, 75,000. Those are going to need some work. So if you're low on cash and you just want to get in someplace, this is a great option. If you get anything over 200, 220,000, it's going to be livable and ready to go. It's a beautiful town too. Number four, Portage, Pennsylvania. Portage sprung up around 1834 when they built a railroad over the Allegheny Mountains to connect Pennsylvania's canal system. Portage sits about 10 miles southeast of Edinburgh and about 22 miles southwest of Altoona. This is another great place to live if you're on a budget. Let's say you're retiring on a fixed income. You could probably afford a house here. It's that cheap. Portage has a population of about 2,600. And they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It's actually 59% lower than the national average, which is pretty good. Their internet, again, big thumbs up. They have Xfinity. I hate the company, but they give good internet. They offer one gig to 90% of the town. On top of that, they have a few other companies that offer one gig and they cover like four and 10% of the town. So chances are you'll be able to get something. Always call ahead. Don't just move someplace counting on them having internet at whatever place you buy or rent or whatever. When it comes to healthcare, we're giving them a faded thumbs up because they don't have like an emergency room or a urgent care in town. I looked, I did some research. It seems like they should. I couldn't find anything. If I'm missing something, let me know in the comment section below. But they do have a couple clinics and a couple doctors in town along with like a physical therapy place. Anything like an emergency room you need, you're, you're going to have to head out to Johnstown, which is about 25 minutes away. And that's to the southwest. If you're looking for real estate in Portage, good news. They get a thumbs up here too. They have a lot of things for sale right now and a lot of them are under 100,000. I'm talking 80,000 to one's 30,000. They need a lot of work and you're gonna have to do some reconstruction but you can get into a home for 30,000 here. You might have to get a trailer while they redo your house for a couple months but that's how cheap it is. That's in town. In the rural areas outside of town, you can get some acres and that usually starts around 200 to 300,000. Like any place in Pennsylvania, the winters can get harsh. So I didn't mention that at the beginning, but Pennsylvania does get some pretty harsh winters. So keep that in mind too. Their summers, I've been there during the summer three different times. I loved it. Winter's a different story. I've also seen snow there get up to about your waist. I was amazed at that type of snow and the person I was with going, oh, I've seen much worse. <laughs> I don't even want to think about it. Number three, Seneca, Pennsylvania. Seneca is a census designated place about 90 minutes south of Erie, Pennsylvania and Lake Erie. So it's a designated area. It's technically not a town, but we're going with it. It's also across the Allegheny River from a place called Oil City. That sounds like a place that should be in Texas, if you ask me. This is a great part of Pennsylvania if you like to do some fishing. Smallmouth, walleye, lake trout, rainbow trout are all big here. If you want to be away from a big city, Seneca is worth a look. They have plenty of small towns and villages in the area, but they are a good distance from anything that could be remotely mistaken for a big city. 
The nearest city is Pittsburgh, and that's a little over an hour and a half to the south. Seneca has about 1,300 residents, and they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It's 60% lower than the national average. When it comes to their internet, they also get a big thumbs up. They have Xfinity. They get over a gig for about 86% of the homes here. And they also have a company called Armstrong that covers about 40% of the town with a gig. When it comes to healthcare, they also get a big thumbs up. They have UPMC Northwest just outside of town, like five minutes outside of town. And that's got everything. It's a huge hospital emergency room open 24 hours a day. Anything you need, you'll get taken care of there. I really doubt there's much you'd have to like go into Pittsburgh or something like that to do. They should be able to handle everything. They also get a thumbs up when it comes to real estate. They have a lot of options, starting off around 70,000 and working their way up to a place for 560,000 that's got some acres. But anything below 100,000, I should say 120,000, you're gonna need to do some work. But those houses are available. But what you really wanna be ready to spend is over 250,000. That'll get you a nice home that's decent, livable, and you might need to put a coat of paint on it or something like that, but you're not gonna have to redo the whole house. Number two, Hometown, Pennsylvania. Yes, it's really called Hometown. Hometown is a village in Rush Township in eastern Pennsylvania, about 90 minutes northwest of Allentown, Pennsylvania. This is a great area if you like to be outdoors, hunt, hike, whatever. They even got a golf course just west of town, the Mountain Valley Golf Course, which is right there. You know, in Pennsylvania, it's my experience. I'm sure they have them, but I haven't seen as many golf courses around some of these small towns as I've seen in other states. This part of Pennsylvania is coal country, in case you didn't already know. I mean, they've still got coal mines around this area. Matter of fact, just down the road, they got a little village called Coaldale. Hometown has a population of 1,300, and they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It's actually 70% lower than the national average. That is phenomenal. Congratulations. They get a thumbs up for their internet. They've got service electric cable vision, which offers one gig to 99% of the town. They have some other ones too, but that's the main one. They also get a thumbs up when it comes to healthcare. They got a dentist in town and like a little nursing rehabilitation center. But if you need a hospital right down the road, like 11 minutes away in Coldell, they have St. Luke's Miners Memorial Hospital, which is a full-blown hospital, everything you're gonna need. If you do need a specialist or something they can't handle there, you probably gonna have to go north about 42 minutes minutes to uh, Wilkesbury. They have big hospitals there. If not, I'm sure Scranton does. Another thing I like about hometown, they're not too far away from Jim Thorpe, which is a really cool place to visit like on the weekend and they have this little train there. That's a really cool town. I wouldn't live there, but it's a pretty cool town to visit. Hometown also gets a thumbs up when it comes to real estate. They don't have a lot for sale right now. Actually, they only have two places. One's going for $250,000. The other one's going for $240,000. It is honestly hard to find a place here that is over $300,000. Most of the homes that have sold for the last five or six months go for under $200,000. They might need a little work. Most of them look decent. They're not totally falling apart or anything like that. They look like decent homes that may need a paint job and a little work and you're good to go for a home that's probably $150,000. Not bad. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. Love it if you went over there and give some videos a big thumbs up and subscribe and all that good stuff. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. All right, on to number one. And number one, Muncie, Pennsylvania. That's right, Pennsylvania has their own Muncie. Muncie sits about an hour west of Wilkesbury on the west branch of the Susquehanna River. This is another great town if you like to go fishing. I was watching videos on YouTube of guys pulling good-sized brown trout out of the river here. A little over 2,000 people call Muncie home, and they get a thumbs up when it comes to their crime rate. It's 91% lower than the national average. That is outstanding. They also get a thumbs up for their internet. They get one gig from Xfinity, and they cover about 75% of the town. Then they have Windstream that has one gig, and they cover about 90% of the town. So you got some seriously good options there. Plenty of internet to stream, game, whatever you want. Matter of fact, you might as well stream The Office. That, if you've never watched The Office in the show, their headquarters was in Scranton, Pennsylvania, which is not too far from here. It's right up the road from Wilkesbury. Muncie's also a great place to live if you got some medical issues because they got a pretty good hospital in town. They get a thumbs up for their health care because they have UPMC Muncie in town. On top of that, they got some doctor's offices and some clinics in the area. So you're good to go on just about anything you need taken care of. Anything they can't take care of, I'm sure if you just went up to Scranton, they've got a nice size hospital there. They'll be able to cover you. 
Muncie also gets a thumbs up when it comes to their real estate. Currently, they only have three places for sale, but in the last month or two, they've sold quite a few places. Your starting money here is around 200,000, and that'll get you a livable home that's a little bit older, but decent. And then it goes up to 250, they have a nice one, and anything over four or 500,000 is gonna be a really nice place. So you got a wide selection for whatever your budget is. I'm sure if you decide to move to Muncie, they'd be happy to have you. That's one good thing I like about Pennsylvania. I've never got that vibe and I've never heard people in the comment section or seen people in the comment section say, don't come here. Like Colorado people, no matter what you're saying about Colorado, they always got to get in the comment section about, oh, don't come here. We're full. They say the same thing about Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, all those places. Pennsylvania, these are good people and they'd be happy to have you. Getting towards the end, we go to the Lone Star State in Texas. Want to find a great rural Texas town? Call a real estate agent and start making mortgage payments? If you said yes, you're not alone. Texas has been the bell of the relocation ball for some time now. The Lone Star State is one of the most popular states to relocate to. Like many states, the most popular places to relocate to are the major cities. The Dallas-Fort Worth area probably being the most popular in Texas with Austin, Houston, and San Antonio metro areas making serious gains in population in recent decades. More and more people moving to Texas are on the lookout for rural towns to call home. Retirees and remote workers are changing the American relocation landscape. Cities aren't a necessity when looking for a job as much as they used to be. These videos are sort of geared towards the remote worker and retirees, basically two demographics that don't need jobs. The downside of most small rural towns is employment options. The lack of jobs is what normally kills small towns. No jobs, people move out. People move out, tax dollars start to dry up. Towns budgets get slashed and more people move out. It's a horrible cycle. If you haven't watched this series before, let me explain. What we're looking for is that sweet spot, a decent place to live that isn't too close to any major cities. It's easy on the crime rates, not five hours away from a hospital or so far out in the sticks you can't get decent internet. In the other videos, I also explain that not all states have 10 good rural towns and I don't want to waste your time with some places that are a reach and shouldn't be on the list just to get 10. A lot of rural Texas towns didn't make the list because of a different reason. I've talked about them a lot in recent videos, so I'd say about seven of them got scratched because we just talked about them within a year. Also, crime and access to healthcare kind of killed a few other ones. Got it? Get it? Good. Let's take a look. Number five, Buffalo, Texas. Buffalo sits almost midway between Dallas and Houston with Dallas to the north being a little bit closer. It's about a 90 minute drive up Interstate 45. I've been getting asked to include the what the weather's like in these different places. So here's what it says. The climate in this area is characterized by hot, humid summers and generally mild to cool winters. So it's not terrible. If you've ever been to this part of Texas, it's not swampy like Louisiana, but in the summer, you kind of get that feel. Good amount of mosquitoes. I like this part of Texas. I've always found it to be a very beautiful place. Have any of you Dallas or Houston residents been to Buffalo, Texas or been through there, spending time, whatever? Let me know in the comment section below. Buffalo has a population of about 2,000 residents and they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It's 44% lower than the national average, which is pretty good, especially for this part of Texas. Now, all the towns on this list have a very low crime rate. That won't stop people in the comment section from claiming that the stats are wrong. It's always someone claiming to be a local and they know better than the stats the FBI and the local police department are, you know, gathering. They always make their comments seem like they have some knowledge of a secret society of criminals that doesn't factor into all the crime stats. They always like to add on there, like to legitimize what they're saying that I've lived here 20 years. I've lived here 15 years. I've lived here 60 years. It's always something like that. It's like, okay, have you been out on the streets every night counting the burglaries, the assaults, the murders? Have you been doing that? Or are you just going by rumors and reputation? Anyway, moving on. They also get a big thumbs up for their internet. They get one gig from Windstream and they cover 99% of the town, which is pretty good. This is a rural town sort of in between two big metro areas they're getting solid internet they have a couple other options that offer like 100 mbps but they only cover like 20 and 30 percent of the town so still big thumbs up when it comes to real estate they're doing pretty good so they're going to get a thumbs up there too a decent home here runs around two hundred thousand dollars getting something with at least a couple acres outside of town will start around three hundred thousand and go up from there way up but this is a very affordable area when it comes to real estate when it comes to health care they get another thumbs up. They 
have a couple doctors in town along with a medical clinic. If you need anything beyond that, 20 minutes to the north in Fairfield, you have a full-blown hospital called Freestone Medical Center. Anything past what they can handle, you're probably going to head into Waco about an hour to the west. Number four, Honey Grove, Texas. Besides sounding like a section of the Willy Wonka factory, Honey Grove is a nice little town northeast of downtown Dallas, about 20 minutes west of Paris, Texas. Davy Crockett discovered the area of Honey Grove when he camped there on his way to join the Texas Army in San Antonio in 1836. He ended up at the Alamo and things didn't work out for him. He never made it back. But Crockett did send many letters back to Tennessee. And in a few of them, he talked about the abundance of honey filled trees in this area. And that's how the town got its name. There was no mention of Willy Wonka or a chocolate factory in any of Crockett's letters. These days, Honey Grove has a population of about 2000 residents and they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It's 44% lower than the national average. They get a faded thumbs up for their internet. They have AT&T DSL, which offers one 100 Mbps. Now, this is the good thing. Starlink, which people keep bringing up in the comment section, which is the SpaceX thing, Elon Musk, whatever, they do get good reviews for this area using Starlink. So that's an option too. When you can get Starlink, it's normally a good connection. So we'll give them a faded thumbs up at least. When it comes to their real estate, they get a thumbs up. They have homes right now that are decent, livable, might need a little bit of work for around 130,000 in town. If you wanna go outside of town a little bit, that starts off around 350,000 and that'll get a little bit of land and it goes all the way up. There's one right now that has eight acres outside of town, $850,000. Eight acres for $850,000 is not that bad. $850,000 in San Francisco will get you a broom closet someone installed a toilet with and they call it a studio condo with a city view. That city view in San Francisco is often referred to as a homeless encampment. When it comes to healthcare, we're going to give them a thumbs up also. They have a family clinic in town along with a nursing home, so that's good. Anything you need past what the clinic it can do. You got Paris, Texas, 20 minutes to the east, or Bonham, Texas, about 15 minutes to the west. If you're a veteran, they have a VA hospital there and a VA home, which is for like disabled retirees that need a place to stay. I'm broad brushing what they do there. There's so much more to it. and That's not the focus of this video, but this is a good area if you're a veteran. Number three, Port Isabel, Texas. This one isn't as much a rural town as a nice beach community away from a major metro area, I guess you could say. It's about 30 minutes east of downtown Brownsville across the water from South Padre Island. So this one's on the fence, whether it could be considered a rural town or not. I just thought I'd add it because it's a nice place to live. And it's also an affordable beach community. They have a population of just under 5,000 residents and they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It's actually 49% lower than the national average average, which is pretty good. They also get a thumbs up for their internet. They have Spectrum here that covers 100% of the town with one gig internet. So that's outstanding. When you look at their healthcare, it's going to get a faded thumbs up. They have a couple doctor's offices in town and a couple of clinics, nothing big, anything major or an emergency room. You got a 30 minute drive to Brownsville and they got a big hospital there and no worries, but not even having an urgent care or anything like that. Uh, that kind of, and being this close to the coast and all that it just sounds like a recipe for a disaster in some cases if an urgent care or something sprung up and i don't know about it please let me know a couple weeks ago i did a video and i said they didn't have an urgent care well about four days before i uploaded the video i guess an urgent care had opened up oh my god these locals got all up my butt about it it's a great place to live if you like to fish they got a nice pirate's landing fishing pier right there that goes along queen isabella causeway it's a pretty cool place to live now here's the other great thing about living here they get a thumbs up for their real estate because they have something for every price range and almost every single thing is a short walk to the water. Have you ever wanted to live in a mobile home park that is right on the water? They have that. It's one of those planned areas where they have these little peninsulas and a bunch of houses on them. You can have your boat right outside your mobile home. There's definitely a lot of options here. Number two, Ganado, Texas, or Ganado, Texas. I did hear one guy call it Ganado, but most people call it Ganado from what I've picked up. Ganado is about 90 minutes southwest of Houston. The city of Ganado was a ranching community when it was first settled. Most of the settlers lived near the Mustang Creek. Ganado is also known for a theater that was part of a now defunct chain of theaters in Texas called Long Theaters. The theater in Ganado opened in the 1930s and it is still in operation to this day. 
Maybe. They shut down during the pandemic and their website says they'll open again soon. I called their phone number. They said that, you know, as soon as they have more information, they'll let people know, but it doesn't look like they've had any movement on it since early 2021. So maybe it's gone for good. Who knows? If you know anything about it, let me know in the comment section below. Ganado has a population of about 1,775 people and they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It's actually 57% lower than the national average, which is outstanding. When it comes to their health care, they also get a thumbs up. They have a couple family practices and the Ganado Medical Center, which is small, but it's there for you. They also have a local dentist. Anything past that, you got to head out to Edna, which is only 10 minutes west of Ganado, and they've got a full-blown hospital and everything you need right there. Ganado has a Mustang Creek, which kind of opens up into this lake area just south of town. So if you like to fish or just be on the water, that's a great option for you. When it comes to their internet, they get a thumbs up. They have YK Communications, which offers one gig, and that covers 97% of the town. They also have another one called Sparklight, which offers one gig, and they cover 76% of the town. So a lot of people living there have some options. If you decide to buy a house in Ganado or Ganado, whichever, the real estate's decent place. A good home will run you about $250,000. They do have cheaper things, but they'll probably need a little work. $250,000 is what you're looking at starting with. And in recent months, they've sold things outside of town, and that usually starts around $400,000, works its way up, and it probably has an acre or two. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There is a link down below. And number one, Sonora, Texas. Sonora sits about two hours northwest of San Antonio, and it has a schoolhouse that could be seen from outer space. This building has the reddest roof I've ever seen. If you look at the satellite image of this town, it's like the schoolhouse jumps out at you. Sonora has a little history. On the night of April 2nd, 1901, William Carver, a member of Butch Cassidy's Wild Bunch, was shot and killed in Jack Owen's bakery by the local sheriff and his deputies. They were trying to arrest him for killing someone else and ended up being a shootout, and he got shot shot in the bakery. Pistol in one hand, loaf of bread in the other. You know, it's got to be humiliating. In the Old West, you're supposed to die in a gunfight on Main Street or, or in a saloon or something like that. Not in a bakery. The only thing worse is getting shot while having afternoon tea, I imagine. It was horrible. There was blood and doilies everywhere. Sonora has a population of just over 3,000 residents, and they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It's 72% lower than the national average, which is outstanding. 72%. That is great. There are not many towns this size in this part of Texas that are doing that well when it comes to their crime rate. When it comes to their internet, they also get a thumbs up. They have HCTC, which I've never heard of, but they offer one gig to 78% of the town. They also have Sudden Link, which I've heard of. They offer one gig to 80% of the town. So you got a couple options there. One's cable, one's fiber. Sonora gets a big thumbs up for their real estate. They have every price for every price range and they have old homes, they have new homes, but I would say if you got 150,000, maybe 135,000, you can get into a home that is decent, livable and ready to go. If you want to go even higher, you can get like five bedroom homes for $299,000 and outside of town they have ranches with acres and those, you know, they can get up into the 5, 600,000 area. But they have plenty to choose from. Healthcare also gets a a big thumbs up here. They have LM Hudspeth, I believe it's pronounced Memorial Hospital in town. They also have a medical clinic. They have a dentist. This hospital has everything from cardiac rehabilitation, hospice, to sports medicine and emergency room. So you're going to get everything you need taken care of here. It looks like a really nice place and it's pretty good size. Sonora is definitely a place you want to move to if you don't mind the desert because this is kind of a desertous area. Technically, it's not a desert though. Sonora's climate is subhumid, subtropical but they've had periods of long droughts, so it's pretty much a desert. All right, to wrap things up, we find ourselves in my current state and my favorite state, the state of Oregon. Let's take a look. Want to find a rural town, get a loan, buy some real estate? Who doesn't, right? Today we're looking at great rural towns in Oregon. This is the eighth video in this series. We did the entire United States to start things off. Then we did New Hampshire, Montana, Georgia, California, Colorado, and Tennessee. And so far, and here we are doing the Beaver State, Oregon. Oregon is an amazing state for people that love the outdoors and beer. This state has more breweries than just about any other state. 
It has a reputation for being a very liberal state, which is a little misleading. Yes, it does lean that way, but most of the towns in the state are kind of the opposite. It is just Portland, Salem, and Eugene. They have more people than the rest of the state combined, so they get all the voting power, so to speak. Oregon has more nice small towns than most states. Rural towns that are nice are a little bit different. They have a whole lot of beach towns in Oregon that are small towns, but they really wouldn't be considered rural towns. In all these videos, I explain that not all states have 10 good rural towns, and I don't want to waste your time with some places that are a bit of a reach and shouldn't be on the list. Oregon has seven. With the towns in this video, we're looking for that sweet spot, a decent place to live that isn't too close to any major city, it's easy on the crime rate, and it's not five hours away from a hospital or so far out in the sticks that you get horrible internet. Those things knocked a lot of small rural towns off this list. So if you're thinking I missed a really good rural town, I might have, but chances are one of those things knocked it off the list. All right, let's take a look. Number seven, Union, Oregon. Union, Oregon is in the Oregon outback, almost in Idaho. Union was platted on November 11th, 1864 along the Oregon Trail, and this place is surrounded by farmland. And past the farmland, you have a bunch of hills. It's a nice place. I mean, as far as landscapes go. The town isn't the greatest, but it's a rural town. It sits about two and a half hours northwest of Boise and about four and a half hours east of Portland. It's about 22 minutes south of La Grande, Oregon, which is the biggest city around this area. Union is a great place to live if you retire on a budget or let's say you work from home and aren't killing it in the salary department. They don't have a bunch of jobs here and they do have some poverty issues, but not a bunch of crime, which is odd. Normally, poverty comes with a lot of crime. They got 2,100 residents living here and they have a crime rate that's 31% lower than the national average. They get a thumbs up for that. That's pretty good, especially for a place that got some poverty. This is a nice community. I mean, they have an adult craft night at Union Carnegie Public Library every single month. I was reading this thing while I was looking up a couple different towns one time and some of them had craft nights at different places like at the Elks Lodge or the whatever lodge and a lot of them had in parentheses describing the night no glitter. <laughs> Apparently glitter is like this horrible thing in the crafting world. I don't know where Union's craft night stands on the glitter situation, but you should call ahead and if you're going to show up, especially if you got like a truckload of glitter and you know you want to spread the joy. When it comes to housing here, they don't have a lot for sale right now. Actually, they have one place for sale. It's really nothing you want. But around January and February, they sold some decent homes and they're normally around 200 to 250,000. That's it. Not bad. And they usually come with a quarter of an or something like that. You go outside of town, they have lots for sale where you can put your own house, maybe even get a motorhome, put it there, whatever you want to do. And those start off around 25,000 and go on up depending on the size. So uh, they get a thumbs up for real estate because it's pretty cheap. You just got to keep an eye out to see when something pops up if this is a place you're thinking about moving to. Their internet isn't the greatest. They get 100 Mbps from Spectrum, who covers 94% of the town. And if you look it up, I had to do some digging because it didn't seem right. They keep showing LeGrand has a gig internet from Spectrum and you know everyone else has great internet there. And no matter, even if you're looking for Union, they kind of tell you what's going on in LeGrand. So it's, it's a little deceiving. You got to dig. I did some digging and found out that, no, they only get about 100 Mbps in Union, which is decent. I mean, you could watch Netflix, play video games on that, whatever you need to do. But it's not one gig, which is kind of the standard these days. So they get a faded thumbs up for that one. It's not bad, just not great. When it comes to healthcare, they do have a clinic in town, but no major hospitals or anything like that. If you need that kind of action, you just got to go up to LeGrand, which is only about 15, 20 minutes away. So they get a thumbs up for healthcare. But Union is a nice little town. It's just in desperate need of some new blood that brings a little money to the town, whether it's you're retired or you work from home. It's a good place to live. Number six, Sisters, Oregon. Sisters, Oregon is uh, not a place for just sisters. That's a reference to some mountains that are nearby. Three Sisters is pretty close, and if you don't know what that is, that's a closely spaced volcanic peaks we have here in Oregon. Uh, they're part of the Cascade Volcanic Arc, as they what they call it in the Cascade Range. Basically, it's three mountain peaks that are close together. Sisters is a great rural town that's on the pricey side. It has that resort mountain town feel you get in like Whitefish, Montana, Jackson, Wyoming, and maybe Truckee, California. Now the town is pretty nice and it's decent. Great little downtown area, nice pubs, nice restaurants, things like that. But the outside of town is very rural. And it's a town that's gaining popularity with people like ex-athletes and celebrities looking for a getaway type place. 
If you want to buy some real estate here, your starting money is going to be around $450,000. that will get you something in town, normal house, but it's a little expensive by most people's standards. This area goes all the way up, though. Uh, I mean, nice cabins with some property go for around two to $3 million. So when it comes to real estate, they get a thumbs up just because they got a wide range of options for you. The population of Sisters is only 2,300 residents with a crime rate that sits about 48% lower than the national average. That is not bad. They get a big thumbs up for that one. When it comes to healthcare, they have some doctor's offices and some clinics that should be able to cover most everything you need. If you need anything past that, you're going to have to go down to Bend, which Sisters sits about 30 minutes north of Bend. And Bend has the full-blown hospital and everything you'd probably need. If what they got in Bend doesn't work for you, you have a very scenic two-hour ride to Eugene to the west. But with what they got in Sisters and what they got in Bend, they get a thumbs up for healthcare. When you get into internet in Sisters, you got Bend Broadband, which will give you a gift and they cover about 91% of the town. After that, they got CenturyLink DSL, which is about 20 Mbps, and that's 86% of sisters. So they get a thumbs up for that. Sisters is definitely a place for people that like the outdoors. There is plenty to do here. If you could afford it, this is one of the better options you have in Oregon. Number five, Amity, Oregon. Amity is a town that was established between 1848 and 1849 by two brothers that came to Oregon via the Oregon Trail. Their names were Joseph and Ahio Watt. I think it's Ahio, A-H-I-O. Anyway, the two Watt brothers decided to start a town and call it Amity. Amity sits about 15 minutes south of McMinnville, Oregon, and about 30 minutes north of Salem. Amity's a cute little rural town with about 1,500 residents and a crime rate that's 42% lower than the national average. People don't do stupid stuff here. So they get a big thumbs up for their crime rate. When it comes to real estate, it's not a bad place to live. I mean, it's definitely not as expensive as Sisters, but it's a little bit more expensive than Union, Oregon. They have a couple different places for sale right now. One's like 420,000, the other one's about 250,000. Looking at stuff that they sold just last month and like in February and January, the average house here, a decent one, is gonna run you about 275,000 to $325,000. Probably a little bit more because prices are going up currently, but somewhere in that neighborhood. This is not a bad place to live at all. Very nice community. When it comes to healthcare, they don't have anything that I could find in town, but you're only like 15 minutes away from McMinnville and they're gonna have everything you need like the Willamette Valley Medical Center. Anything past that, you got Salem right down the road about 30 minutes and they're gonna have everything you need. So they get a thumbs up for healthcare. When it comes to housing, it's a pretty cheap place, so they get a thumbs up for that. When you look at the internet of Amity, you don't have any worries. They got Xfinity, which will give you a gig, and they cover about 75% of the town. After that, you have Zipply Fiber, which gives you about 120 megs, and they cover 84% of the town. They also have another one called Lycra, I believe it's called, but they have DSL and Fiber. They offer one gig, and they cover 99% of the town. So you're going to be able to find one of them that's going to be able to get you some good internet. So they get a big thumbs up for that one. I like any place that has multiple providers for internet. Years ago, I switched from Comcast to Frontier, and like three days into it, Frontier went down for four days, and I can't have that. So I called Comcast and re-signed up with them. But, you know, if you're in one of those towns that only has one provider, you're out of luck. You know, you're at their mercy. But Amity's in a perfect location where you're far enough away from McMinnville, not like McMinnville's a big city, but you're far enough away to where you could live a nice, peaceful life and still have McMinnville or Salem down the road in case you want to do something a little more interesting. Now, also, McMinnville has a college there, Linville University, in case you're uh, looking to further educate yourself or you got some kids that are going to college. McMinnville also has the Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum, which is a really cool place. They got the Spruce Goose there and just any kind of flying machine you could think of. But that's not the best part. That is pretty cool. I like that. But right next door, they have a really cool indoor water park that you can go to whenever. So if you got kids or grandkids or whatever, you just head up the road to that. Number four, Oak Ridge, Oregon. Have you ever heard of Oak Ridge, Oregon? Unless you live in the area or you like to mountain bike or fish, you probably have never heard of Oak Ridge, Oregon. This is a great place to live if you like the outdoors, especially if you like fishing, like fly fishing and mountain biking and hiking. Great place to live. Oak Ridge sits on the Salmon Creek, uh, not too far from Hills Creek Lake or Hills Creek Reservoir. I've heard it called both. I think my friend Will from Herman's Outdoors has fished there before. I could be wrong. Uh, if I find that video, I'll leave a link down below. You guys fished most places in Oregon, so... I wouldn't doubt he's been out that area. 
Oak Ridge has about 3,200 residents and their crime rate sits at 14% lower than the national average. So they get a thumbs up from that. It's not the best on this list, but it's still well below the national average. Not bad, Oak Ridge. And they got train tracks too. So normally when you got train tracks, you got some crime. They don't. When it comes to internet, they only get a faded thumbs up because they got CenturyLink that offers 100 Mbps to about 93% of the town. I'm sure downtown, it's perfectly fine, but they have a lot of homes in the rural outskirts of town, and I'm sure a lot of them aren't really connected. They also have another one called Emerald Broadband that offers uh, fiber just to like 5% of the town, and they offer one gig there. So they don't have the best options, but at least they got internet. Oh, and I guess Emerald also offers 125 Mbps to about 68% of the town. Still, faded thumbs up. When it comes to healthcare, Oak Ridge does have like a couple medical clinics, nothing major. Anything you're going to need past that, you got that drive up to Eugene about an hour away. So they get a faded thumbs up for that. Not saying they're doing bad work in Oak Ridge. I'm sure the clinics do everything they can. I'm sure they're really good at their job. They're just kind of small which is to be expected. It's a small rural town. When it comes to real estate in Oak Ridge, they're kind of all over the map. Houses start off around $220,000, which are decent, livable, and they go all the way up to five hundred, six hundred thousand, 600,000, and that's normally a nice cabin on a creek with like an acre of land or something. So they get a thumbs up from that because they got some pretty nice places for a relatively affordable price. But Oak Ridge is a bit out in the sticks, so if that's not your thing, you might want to overlook them. It's a beautiful place to live though. Number three, Prescott, Oregon, or if you're in uh, Arizona, it's Prescott. Prescott, Oregon is one of the smaller places you're going to find on any list I ever do. It's almost not even a town, but it's close to my house. I like it there, and I've actually looked at property there. Prescott only has about 50 people living there, and it sits about an hour north up the Columbia River from Portland, Oregon. Prescott's one of those like hidden places that the locals really don't want you to know about. And here I am blowing the whistle on them. They don't have anything, no amenities, no stores, no gas stations, nothing like that. But Longview is right up the road in case you do need anything. Longview, Washington's right across the bridge, like 15 minutes away. So it's not terrible. This one's just a nice, quiet little community. Prescott's one of those towns that you want to keep your eye on if this is something you're thinking about because houses don't pop up too often. When they do, they're a reasonable rate. In the last couple of years, they've sold some homes for $290,000 and $275,000. Right now, they have one place going for $285,000. You know, you just got to keep an eye on it if you're thinking about moving there. The other day, I had a guy email me and go, why do you keep bringing it up if nothing's for sale? I'm all, well, things pop up all the time. He's all, but nothing right now. So I had to go into detail with him that anyone watching a video, if I've given them the idea of moving someplace, they're going to do some research, they're going to look into it, and they might move there in a year or two. Real estate changes in a year or two. Houses go on the market, houses come off the market. This is just giving you an idea. Anyway, the real estate in Prescott gets a thumbs up because it's affordable, it's right on the river, and it's a nice community. When it comes to internet, they get kind of a faded thumbs up. It's a small community, so no one's really put a bunch of effort into getting internet there. So you got CenturyLink DSL that offers maximum speed of 100 Mbps. And uh, they also have AT&T, but that's not the best there. When it comes to healthcare, they've got nothing in town, but Longview, like I said, is right there. And they've got, you know, Peace and Health Medical Center. They got a Kaiser place there. They've got pretty much anything you need medical wise is going to be in Longview. And that's like 15 minutes away or less. Anything major, you're going to go down to Portland. That's only an hour away. So they get a thumbs up for that. Obviously, they're not going to have anything in town. There's only like 30 or 50 people living in the whole town. Number two, Vernonia, Oregon. I love Vernonia. I've actually talked about it on this channel before. I've tried to convince my wife to move to Vernonia a couple times. My friend Stacy used to live there. I think she lives near me now. Anyway, I used to work with her at Nike. She lived there. She loved it. It's a great little town. I've been there. They got a river running through town or a creek, whatever. And it's really neat. They have like a public swimming pool where they have lifeguards put out by the town and all that. And it's right off the river. They just kind of flow some uh, water into this area. And it's a swimming area. It's pretty cool. Vernonia has about 1,900 residents living there, and they've got a crime rate that's 63% lower than the national average. That's outstanding. Good job, Vernonia. Even though Vernonia is out in the sticks, they still have some things that you'd need. They have a Napa Auto Parts. They have a Subway. They have a couple different restaurants. Uh, their store, I had a friend that grew up there, and she said the store kind of sucks because they're so far out in the sticks, everything's almost like double in price, so that kind of sucks. But like I said, it's got a nice downtown little bridge that goes right over Rock Creek. The Nehalem River is not too far away. And I do know for a fact that Will from Herman's Outdoors goes and fishes there all the time. 
Now they also have this other really cool thing. It's a bike path that's, you know, it's cemented or whatever, uh, it's asphalt, and it goes all the way from Banks to Vernonia, and the trail is beautiful, and it's a good distance. It's a 20 mile bike ride. Now it's not like off-roading, you're not mountain bike or anything like that. It's a nice path, it's pretty cool. Vernonia sits about 24 minutes away from Banks, which is a medium-sized town. And like Prescott, it's about an hour away from Portland, Oregon. When it comes to healthcare, they have like a family practice in town. Anything past that, you can go to Banks, but more than likely you'll end up like in Hillsboro, which isn't too far from my house. It's about 45 minutes away from Vernonia. So they get a big thumbs up for that. I like Vernonia because it's a good size rural town that you wouldn't expect it to be there. I mean, you go out to the farmland and things are kind of sparsely populated. Then you kind of go out into the hills. Then you get to Vernonia and Vernonia's way out there by itself. It's kind of big for being that far away from everything else it's kind of strange when it comes to internet they have century link out there it doesn't cover too much of the town they also have a thing called coho net which offers 100 megabits per second and they cover about 99 percent of the town they also have ziply fiber which is rolling out there that offers five gigs yeah but they only cover about 10 percent of the town right now so they get a thumbs up for internet if ziply does get the five gigs out there more than just 10 percent of the town they'll get a giant thumbs up next time around i'm sure when it comes to real estate, Vernonia is a pretty good place. I mean, they're all over the map. Starting off, money is going to be somewhere around $250,000 and the house is going to need a little work. But then you get up to about $300,000 and you're going to get a decent place. The highest they got going right now is a really good looking suburban type home. Three bedroom, two bath for $400,000. If you got a cool million floating around, they got 10 acres for sale that's right on the edge of town. So they get a thumbs up for their real estate. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. We would really like it if you went over there, watched some videos, give some big thumbs up. Remember, giving videos a big thumbs up, it doesn't cost you anything, but it does help out the channel. This one included, not just on this day. All right, on to number one. And number one, Carlton, Oregon. Carlton, Oregon isn't too terribly far from where I live also. Carlton is definitely a rural town. I mean, it's got farmland for as far as the eye can see. As long as you don't look south. I mean, to the south, you got McMinnville, and that's about 15 minutes away. Probably a little less. This is a nice place to live if you like wine and you like creeks. There's creeks everywhere around here, and the only thing that outnumber the creeks are the wineries. They're all around this area. This is some of the best wine country in the nation right here. This is like a wine town. In town, there's like 20 wine restaurants or winery type places that are associated with some kind of vineyard, which is usually just on the outside of town where they have a ton of them. Look at these pictures. This is the map. It's insane. But the Willamette Valley is known for its wine and this is part of it. So if you're looking for wine, fishing, and a cute small town, Carlton may be the town for you. It's a really nice place. Like Vernonia, they only have 1,900 residents and a crime rate that's 38% lower than the national average. So they get a thumbs up for that. When it comes to real estate here, they don't have much to offer right now. Matter of fact, they have one place. It's going for like $500,000 and it's a couple acres and it's just outside of town. But since December of last year, they've sold quite a few homes in this area and they normally go for around $385,000 to $485,000, somewhere in that area. Just right now, they don't have a lot to offer. So they get a thumbs up because I think their low inventory is very temporary. As I just did this one, I marked Carlton down as one of the towns I'm going to go visit this summer. So you can be expecting a wine filled video. When it comes to internet, that's not a problem here. About 80% of the town is covered by Xfinity with one gig, a little over gig, actually 1.2. And then they got CenturyLink that covers 91% of the town with 100 megabytes per second. And Ziply is another one that's just going into the town there. They're offering 25 on DSL and they cover about 15% of the town. So they get a big thumbs up for internet. When it comes to healthcare, they got a small clinic in town. And then outside of that, you go down to McMidville, like I said, less than 15 minutes away and they're gonna have everything you need. So they get a thumbs up for their healthcare. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day. Be nice to each other. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. If you'd like to see another one of these, leave a comment in the section below. Let me know what you think. Make sure you give the video a big thumbs up. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.